And therefore, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board. Um, Cindy, would you please conduct a roll call? Yes. Uh, Karen Diamond. Here. Carolyn Derblick. Here. Becky Keen Adams. Becky, Dr. you're muted. Sorry, here. Thank you. Diane Olson. Here. Patty Wazanski. Here. Linda Ryan. Here. Okay, thank you all. Um, I would like everyone to please stand for our Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag the United States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which, for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. For all. <clears throat> okay, thank you all. Um, the next thing on our agenda is approval of the minutes. May I have a motion? to approve the regular board meeting minutes of March 17th, uh, 2021. Do I have such a motion? Patty has uh, made a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Becky, second. All right. Are there any comments or corrections to the minutes of March 17th? I have a Carol? correction um, on page well, I think it's the first page, um, last paragraph. Um, I'd like to make a correction to the sentence. It's missing uh, part of my statement. It's the second line. Trustee Derblick questioned why the Culver parking lot lease payment is missing from the check register. Um, and I motion to correct it by inserting since the board did not vote to accept the moratorium instead of eliminating the parking lease entirely. Uh, Carolyn, would you say that again? I'm not sure I caught it. Okay. Um, the portion I want to add to that sentence is since the board did not vote to accept the moratorium instead of eliminating the parking lease entirely. All right, to the move on to the second, uh, accept that change. Okay. Um, unless I hear an affirmation, uh, the movement, the motion stands no. as it was. No. Yes, let it stand, please as it was originally. All right. The minutes, okay. I'm saying. All right, then uh, unless there's any other, uh, other individuals who wish to make corrections or changes, uh, may have a roll call on the motion to approve the minutes. Motion. Second. No, I mean a, a roll call. We need a roll call. Okay. Okay. Um, Patty Rosansky. Yes. Linda Ryan? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Karen Diamond? Yes. Carolyn Derblick? Uh, no. Becky Keen Adams? Yes. Diane Olson? Yes. Okay, we'll move to public comment now. Um, Director Lemke, do we have any requests for a public comment? Um, I, we do have a few. Let me read the ones I received in advance, and then it looks like they're are at least two here. Uh, I have from Suzanne Atanas. She asked me to read her subject line as well, which is public comment for Niles Main Library Meetings, referendum question for next election ballot in 2022 by signatures. And it says, the Niles Main Public Library will reduce its budget 25% over the next two years and thereafter will refrain from increasing it for five years. So that is her comment. 
Okay. Uh, looks like Joe McCullough is here to make his own comment, so I will not read what I received from him earlier today. Uh, I have from Jerry Sapansky. Uh, Mrs. Lemke, please use your position to recommend to the current Board of Trustees to defer any expenditure votes scheduled for this evening, 4-21-17, until the- Did I catch that right? The date he refers to is April 21st of 2017? That is what it says. I must not be what he meant. Uh, until the newly elected trustees have an opportunity to review all expenditures. The new board should have the ability to be given a review of the bids for the proposed roof expenditure, as well as a review of the auditor decision. Without your referral to table the expenditures until May or June, you are not only voiding the wishes of the voters in this last election, but raising the possible issue of removing the finance director and or yourself from the library administration. <laughs> thorough information of this kind of spending should be made to all new trustees with adequate time to review and discuss them. Signed, longtime Burt Niles resident, Jerry Sapansky. And then there was a follow-up to that from a John Muller saying, I agree with Mr. Sapansky. Remember the old saying, what goes around comes around. The next election is only two years away and a lot of us have long memories. Those are wow. the public comments that were received in advance of the meeting. Um, and now we have Mr. Karabata. So, so just, just so I can clarify, so Mr. Sabansky might have, must have copied Mr. Muller on his letter? Uh, Mr. Sabansky copied it on many people, yes. Oh, okay, so this is just one of those people he copied that was correct. following up, okay. That is correct. All right, and then we have Mr. Karabata would like to talk. Okay. You will have to unmute. There we go. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good. My comment is this. I looked over the board agenda. I would join Mr. Muller and I would join Mrs. Zapansky in that the monies that we're talking about are extremely significant in amount. And these are matters that should be addressed by the people of the village of Niles, the people of, of Maine Township through their new board and not through the current board. The uh, current board should be simply smoothing the pathway, concluding matter, to simply uh, tabling matters so that the new board can come on and look at this type of spending. When you're looking at a million dollars plus, um, it's wholly and completely uh, irresponsible for a board to make that type of decision. I'm in the same situation with Maine Township. In Maine Township, we are now changing boards, and we've been deferring uh, quite a bit of, uh, of things now to such that we would defer any such spending to the new board. Also, the contractors are on notice. Any of these contractors that are, are involved here, um, the new board may have the ability of a right to rescind the contract. <coughs> The new board may have the right to amend the contract or to uh, totally uh, terminate the contract. And they're on notice that the majority of the board, based on the emails I've read and based on the information I received, that the majority of the board does not, of the new board, does not want these contracts ruled upon today. I think that we should exercise resp uh, responsible governance uh, by. Uh, tabling each and every matter, all uh, 10 that I saw, this should be tabled for to a minimum of the next meeting where the new board can get their, can get themselves going and can go ahead and administer the uh, financial, the financial business of uh, Niles Main Library as the people require. Thank you. All right. And then we also have a comment from Mr. McCula. Hello. Uh, can you hear me at this point? Yes. Yes. Can. yes. Okay. A new board has been elected by the voters of Niles Main District Library. The results are known, but not yet certified by the Cook County Clerk. The authority of the current library board expires on April 27th, or as soon as the election results are certified by the Cook County Clerk, which could come tomorrow or anytime this week also. 
The current library board is going full speed ahead with nearly $1 million of new spending on seven appropriation me measures on their April 21st Zoom meeting. They are considering this massive spending with seven days of, or less of authority to do so. This mid-May action is highly irregular considering that none of this is in response to any emergency. We are the majority of the new board and we demand that one, none of these bids be accepted until they are reviewed by the new board members. I've run this past the other three people coming out that are gonna be on our team on the board and everybody agrees with the statement. Their, their action in setting up a major, is setting up a major point of conflict between the remaining board members, the library director, the library business manager, and the new board majority. Do not let this happen. This must not all be sidetracked so the new board can take a second look and have their input. Only a fool would object to more oversight on a matter of this significance to the taxpayers. This action is a slap in the face to the incoming board, voters, taxpayers, and the reputation of the financial responsibility of this library board. We can guarantee that we, the new board majority, will honestly review in an expedited manner each of these seven bids as soon as we are sworn in, which we are prepared to do the day of certification. We are prepared to do it next week when, when it's certified, but apparently not until the meeting is gonna happen in uh, I believe the 19th of uh, May. All contractors should be on notice that the new board must have the right of rescission and will act appropriately and prudently in the best interest of the taxpayers, library patrons, and the library itself, should any of these bids be approved. This type of action contemplated by the current board, the director and the business manager are the reason that our team was elected. We plan to investigate all of our legal options in this massive last minute spending spree. Thank you. All right, and then I did have two phone calls from two people that uh, asked me to convey their public comments verbally. I heard first from Sam Zincano. He uh, asked that the board, uh, says he would prefer that all financial motions be tabled until the new administration. And he asked me to tell you to do that. Uh, and then I also heard from Bob Zelesny who said something very, very similar. Do us a favor and table all the financial motions until the next meeting. So I would just like to respond to the fact that several people have indicated that I should be telling the board what to do. Um, my job is, and Greg's job, is to look out for the best interests of this institution. That is, that is my only job. I do not ever tell the board what to do. I'm only giving you information so that you can make the appropriate decisions. So if you want to table these items, I am perfectly fine with that. I happen to know Greg is perfectly fine with that. We put the information before you because it's our job to make sure that we don't have a catastrophic failure of the roof before it's repaired or a catastrophic failure of the phone system before it is replaced. That's, that's our job. The rest of this is your job. And if you decide that you don't want to approve these tonight, we're not going to cry about it. It is completely up to you. So that is all I have to say about that. I don't believe there are any further public comments. I don't see any more hands raised. Okay, thank you. Uh, and just to clarify, under the statute, the new board, um, their office, their terms do not begin until the third week of May, not, uh, not next week. Uh, and that's under the Illinois uh, Consolidated Statutes. So I think next we'll turn to our trustee report. I, I, sorry, yeah. I, do have, I have two more hands have gone up since I said there were no more hands. Uh, one of them is a telephone number. Uh, uh, well, one of them is, is Myrna Zelesny, so let's hear what Myrna has to say. Hello, how's everybody? Thanks for uh, allowing me to speak here. Um, the, just very quickly, the people of Niles had a choice. One group easily found a lot of things to spend money on, and the other group really wanted a chance to look more closely at the spending. And this is the team that apparently is going to be winning the election. I would just respectfully ask uh, that you table this extensive spending wish list and allow the voters an opportunity to have the spending further examined. You know, I truly believe in my heart that the new people that will be coming on 
will not just say, no, 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 I don't believe that for a second. I believe they truly want to look at what are the things that are going on and have a good understanding. And um, I know that if it's necessary, I truly believe in my heart that they will vote for those things. But I think it's fair that they're allowed to look at those um, a very you know large spending bills and be part of that also. So I do thank you for listening and continue on. And then here is the telephone number. I'm not sure who this is. Hello, this is Susanna Tannis. Can you hear me? Um, yes, Mr. Tannis. Your um, your comment was already read. To okay, the I have I have something I have something in addition to that. Is that okay? Uh, I just well, want I... you to know. I just want you to know that the Niles Main Public Library does not have a carte blanche, meaning you can spend and spend, you know, whatever and for everything that you want to spend on. It's not going to work that way. We are suffering from a pandemic. I don't see recovery to normal within three years. Nobody does. And we may never get the businesses that we had contributing to our tax base ever come back. As, as time goes on, it looks dismal. At the same time, more families need help financially and are going to the Family Service Center. Their budget is probably going to go up. More seniors need help. As they get older, more seniors need drivers. They're, the drivers aren't going to do it for nothing. Their budget is going to go up. And so the library budget cannot continue to go up either. Now, you can cut craft classes. The leader of the craft class gets paid $300. You, you have to cut your craft classes. You have to cut entertainers coming in, even though they're virtual. You have to cut. And I'm letting you know that we have the right to get signatures and put a referendum on the next election ballot. And it looks like we are going to be forced to. For the library to drop its budget within 25%, because you don't have the sense enough to do it on your own. Now it's exacerbated by the pandemic financial crisis, and the Village of Niles put an 8% tax levy, which means the next tax bill, we should see 8%. Well, we can't keep on getting an 8% you know, in 2022 and 2023 and 2024. At the same time, the library wants to increase its budget. The library has to know. Books are important. It goes hand in hand with outstanding schools in our area. Library has to be outstanding as well. You can go towards more e-books. The library building is now way too big because we are going to be going more to e-books. It is important for the books to be up to date. It's important for our students to have the best material. And that's where if we're going to spend, we need to spend on the best materials. But as far as craft classes, entertainment classes, other entertainment, that has to be cut as much as possible, 25% till you get down 25% within the next two years, and thereafter no increases for five years. And then when it, five years is up, please don't go drastic with your spending, and please keep it at the same level if you can't. So it's time for the library to wake up. You don't have a carte blanche, meaning you could keep on spending and spending and spending. It's up to the families to entertain their family. It's not the library's responsibility. Yes, it was nice, but now we cannot see any more increases. All right? I've made my piece, and I mean it very strongly. Thank you. And now we have Denise McCreary who'd like to speak. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, two or four years ago, this current board was elected uh, by the people of the village of Niles. And uh, it is your duty to um, 
make sure that you continue working up until the time that you are no longer on this board. So while I don't agree with everybody else that all of the items should be tabled, what I would say as a courtesy to the incoming board, any expenditure that could be tabled, I would recommend that be done as a courtesy. But I do think it's important that this board continue to work um, as the village voters um, elected you to do at the last election. So I trust that transparency is is on the table and that's being done tonight. Uh, however, uh, if there are items that can be tabled, I would certainly recommend that. Thank you so much. All right, that appears to be it. Okay, all right, then we'll move on to trustee reports. Um, I do not have any uh, reports of any activity during the past month. Um, any of the other trustees, have you uh, attended any library related events during the past month? Patty? Patty, but you are on mute, okay. I am, I'm off now. Uh, yes, I went to the library combined with quite a few other libraries in the general area to put on uh, talks with authors. And I saw the uh, Harlan Coben one, it was fantastic, it was fantastic. And doing it with other libraries actually saves each of the libraries some money. So it's a, it's a good thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Anyone else? All right, then it's time for our treasurer's report. So Patty, I'm gonna call upon you again. Thank you. Uh, this month, since we had such a thick packet, I decided to try and keep it as short as possible compared to what I have in the past few months. This is, this is for the month of March, the eighth month of the fiscal year. We are 66% of the way through the year. Revenues are at 83% of the budget. Library, um, oh God, I, I didn't write down that whole thing. Whatever, was it? Okay, I'll go to the next one. Library operating expenses is at 44%. Uh, General and administration is at 65% of the budget. Utilities are at 65% of the budget. Workers uh, compensation is at 61% of the budget. Building and equipment maintenance is at 43. Total expenditures is at 58% of the budget. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, let's go to uh, payment of the bills. Do I have a motion to approve operating expenses of $197,765.71, payroll expenses of $267,864, dollars and 14 cents for a total monthly expense of $465,629.85. Do I have such a motion? Motion. motion. Um, and did I hear a second in there too? I think Patty was one and Diane was the second, I believe. Mm -hmm. I believe. Okay, all right, that's uh, on the floor. Do we have uh, any questions about this motion? or the uh, checks. Do we have any questions about that? All right, um, I don't see any. Uh, I asked mine, so. I'm sorry, yes? I already asked mine of Susan before the meeting, so I'm good, okay. thanks. Thank you, thank you. So I presume even our speakers uh, this evening would want us to pay bills uh, rather than incurring late fees. So um, I would like a roll call. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, no. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, 
director's report. Um, Susan? Like Patty, I saw how many, how much was on the agenda for this night, for tonight, and I decided to not speak very much. Um, uh, but you had asked me to talk about what I was going to present to or what sorts of things would be presented to the new board members as part of board orientation so that you could uh, advise me on if there was anything else that you thought ought to be included. So these are the things that I would normally include. Uh, they would get a binder that has the different documents in it. Um, the first thing is, of course, they would get a list of the, their fellow trustees and their contact info. Um, they would find out how to check into their email so that they can be, um, be monitoring what gets sent out from the library and from residents. Uh, I, we always, they always give a current org chart so that they know who is working in the library and how the library is structured with the different departments. So um, you're, you're talking about an employee chart, right? Would that be correct? It, it would be an organization chart, organization. but it would also, that that's the one that does include the names right. of the employees so that they can see everybody and how they all make okay. up the staff. Um, and I usually give that to the board at the rest of the board at the same time, just because it's an updated version of what they've already received. Uh, and do review the, the bylaws, since the bylaws are primarily about how the board works and is structured, and, and people need to take it seriously because it can't be changed without five positive votes. Um, I have created a vocabulary sheet that, because I know library, the library world can be kind of full of jargon, and I try to avoid jargon when I can, but, uh, but there also are a great many uh, agencies and different groups that people work with, and so I go through the vocabulary sheet I explain what CCS is. I explain what the Illinois State Library provides. I talk about what Rails does for the library, what its role is. And then of course the American Library Association and the Illinois Library Association. So they get that vocabulary sheet that they can refer to if they come across something that uh, they don't understand. They get a copy of the most recent budget. They get a copy of the most recent financials. Usually Mr. Pritz is there to run through some of that information and kind of explain what the different parts of the financials are. Um, I give them instructions for how to log in and do the Open Meetings Act training, which is a requirement of all board members. Um, let's see, uh, I check with them if they prefer to have an emailed or print copy of the policies. And if it's print copy, I either way, I give them what they whatever version of that they want. Uh, we give them a copy of the standards for Illinois public libraries that every board member must be familiar with so that you know if we are fulfilling the responsibilities. And it also has a list of all the laws that the board is legally required to be following. There are a lot of them. Uh, I review chapter one of trustee facts files, which is trustee duties and responsibilities. It kind of lays out which parts are board responsibilities and which parts are my responsibilities. And then last of all, there is a new thing that I was gonna add that is a sheet of Rails resources that have the login information for trustee training videos and a list of the different organizations that offer different kinds of training um, so that you would have all of that. Is, am I missing anything? And of course they also get a tour. Uh, Becky. Yeah, I have a few things actually. <laughs> Um, and I hope they're helpful. What you did cover, one of them was um, how to access the training at Rails because it is actually really confusing. Um, you know, as someone who uses a lot of different library programs and websites, it's it was difficult even for me to get in to figure out how to sign up for training. So that would be very helpful. Um, I think a copy of the, um, the Niles main library ethics for the trustees. Um, that you were able to give me at one point, I think that would be very helpful to have in the packet. Um, and then um, information on how to, I don't know, I, I was already a member of ALA when I was appointed, so I'm not sure how that's addressed with new trustees, but how to and why it's a good idea to be members of the American Library Association as well as the Illinois Library Association would be helpful. Um, and then I, there's a couple documents from um, organization called United for Libraries. Um, one is called uh, Tip Sheet Number 11, and it's titled The 12 Golden Rules for Board Members. Um, and then there is another one um, called Public Library Trustee Ethics Statement that I think is very helpful. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for making those suggestions. You're, you know, a fairly recent addition to our board, so I think probably you know best what helps a board member when they come on and what types of documents are are, are useful right when you start with the board. So thank you for the that uh, addition to the list. Okay. If all right. I anyone else? Any questions? Any... I'm happy to answer them, but otherwise, that's all I have. All right. Thank you. You have a very 10 page plus detailed report in our packet. So, so thank you for all that information. Uh, does anyone have any questions of uh, Director Lemke? If not, uh, we will go on. I have a couple. I'm sorry, Carolyn, did you say something? Yes, um, am I on mute? Um, I have a couple. No. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, Oh, you mentioned in your um, director's report about the um, drop-off box. There's two, one that I think um, the um, maintenance manager created. It was temporary. And now that we have that automatic sorter working, um, did you decide that you were going to just use that second one for a few weeks? Is that, is, has that passed yet or are you still using it? Uh, you're talking about the the one that's just basically the wooden door that's got a slot in it. Um, yeah, that's that's still there because people are still throwing their items in it. You know, some people don't even drive to the front of the library to return; they just drive directly to there. But we have a sign there telling them that the new that the uh, automatic one is available, so they can return there. And most people are returning through the sorter now, but there are still a few people using the slot, and so we'll leave it up there for a couple more weeks, and then we'll just go ahead and, and close it up. Okay, Susan, this slot is not right next to the sorter? Oh, no. No, it's, it, it, remember, it was in quarantine, so it was actually deliberately separated from the sorting area. It was, they were, like, off in the large meeting room all by themselves, sitting on carts while, you know, at one point it was, what, four days of, of quarantine time? So, yeah. Yeah, so they were off in a different room. But when you're outside of the building, aren't these two close in proximity to each other? No, the, it's the large meeting room door is what was taken out and put a wooden board on it. So it's around the Oakton Court side of the building. Okay, you know, I saw this metal square next to the sorter and you push it open and there and you could put books in there. Yeah, that, that's part of the sorter. Yeah, that's, the, that's one of the patron induction stages. That's the outdoor one. And then there are indoor oh. ones. Yeah, sorry, we um, missed that number. You're talking about the one on the, okay, I get sorry. it. All right, that was, that's the only question I had. I didn't Maybe I can I clarify. Um, <laughs> there's an induction, there is an induction station outdoors. Once we had the uh, uh, sorter put in in 2013, um, the board at the time thought it would be a good idea to reinstall a, uh, a manual return. Uh, adjacent to it. So there are two there. Um, but we had closed that and the induction station in directly into the sorter uh, during the uh, pandemic because of the quarantine rules. So all of the books had to go into a different location altogether and be held there until such time that they were safe to reintroduce into the library as a whole. Okay, well, now I understand it's actually on the other side. Okay, thanks for that explanation. Sure. Okay, any other questions or comments about the director's reports or for that matter, communications? I, I, that's in our packet too. I do. Okay, I yes. just have a comment on something that was in the director's report and I apologize, I don't know what page it's on right now, but I think Susan will remember. Um, I wanted to congratulate the staff for taking part in a training on homeless people and how to help them in the library. What was that called, Susan? Uh, training for working with the homeless, and it's uh, it's actually something that there uh, you join the organization and then you get multiple trainings on it. It's extremely helpful. It's just so well done. Ryan O'Dowd, I think his name is. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't so, aware of anything like that, but I think it's really important. Uh, you know that a lot of people use the library. Homeless people use the library, um, and it needs to be a safe space. And it's very important for the staff to be trained on how to handle them because they're not. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes um, it, it really helps to have that kind of training. Thank you. Yeah, it, and it, it's helpful also just because there are skills that carry over in other areas too, because you learn just in general de-escalation techniques and, and things like that. So it's really, it's wonderful. 
Thanks. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, next one is a uh, new business. Uh, Susan, do we by any chance have uh, anyone from BEC? We do. Attending yes. This evening? This evening? Okay, uh, Mr. David uh, Balistrieri. I, I know you're from Building Envelope Consultants Limited. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, we can. All okay. right. So um, before we start this discussion, um, I, perhaps you can give us a, a well, I think perhaps we should get a motion on the floor and then we can start to discuss it. We can ask questions of you. I do have a motion to uh, award a $716,400 contract from the library special reserve fund to complete building management company to remove and replace the library roof. Do I have such a motion? Patty and Diane. Okay, all right, fine. So I, I would like to start off by asking uh, Ms. Ballesteri some, some questions here. So uh, we have received some bids uh, to complete the roof work and we've received six bids, uh, but I understand three of those six have been found to be non-responsive or uh, not eligible. That is, they didn't conform to the bid specifications. Is that correct? Correct. All right, so I understand the bids went out and um, after they went out, there were a couple of addendums and the first addendum went out on March 23rd and uh, told the bidders, the prospective bidders, there were gonna be some changes or there was some clarification, rather it was clarifications <clears throat> and modifications that went out to them. And then there was a second addendum that went out on April 9th of 2021 a second addendum, which provided more clarification to the bid specifications. Am, am I correct so far? Yes. Okay, all right, fine. So then after the bids closed, um, did it come to your attention that some of the bidders, actually three of the six bidders had not included some of, or rather their bid does not conform to what we requested. That is, they had not include necessary tapered insulation for three rough areas. I presume the having it tapered has something to do with the proper drainage on the roof. Would that be correct? Yes. Okay, all right. So um, did you check to see if all six conformed or didn't conform to the bid specifications? All six of the ones that you received? We did. Uh, when the bid numbers came in, we were surprised at how wide uh, the, the space was in the numbers and we uh, suspected that there was a, an issue. We wanted to make sure that there was not. Um, each of the contractors was surveyed to ask if they were certain they had everything in their bid uh, to conform with the project. And it became, we became aware that three of them did not include tapered insulation for those three roof areas, but the remaining three did in fact uh, do, do such. All right, so the ones that did conform were the companies called Complete, Knickerbocker, and Riddeford, also known as Roof Connect. Is that right? Yes. Okay, fine. And uh, can you tell us what the spread of the bids were on that? We have it in our packet, but in, pack it, but in case people don't have uh, it right before them. The uh, low bidder, which was, well, I mean, the, of the conforming bids or of the non-conforming? Yeah, the conforming bids, yeah. The, the conforming bids, uh, the spread was from $716,400 to $975,500. Uh, both okay. Knickerbocker and Riddeford were at, the, at or above that $900,000 mark. Complete was significantly below uh, both of those bids. All right, and so are you recommending the lowest conforming bidder as being the, as being the successful bidder? Yes. Um, are you familiar with this uh, bidder uh, in terms of their um, reputation for doing acceptable work? BEC generally is yes. We, we, we believe all six contractors were eligible and would provide a, a decent program, but uh, Complete is certainly one of them. Okay, all right. Um, I wanna allow the other board members an opportunity to ask any questions they might have regarding 
the bids that we received uh, at this point in time. Does anyone else have any questions regarding the bids that we received to perform the roof work pursuant to our specifications? Oh, I see. First of all, I saw Becky and then I, Diane, I saw your hand. So I'm going to ask Becky first. Yeah, this is not a question. It's just um, I wanted to read something from the, you know, the paper that was in our pack and also posted online just to make sure that the public is aware of this because I have heard several comments concerning this. Um, so in the memorandum here, it does say that the uh, design specifications were completed in early March and an ad was posted in the Niles Journal on March 17th and on the library's website as well. I just want to make sure everyone knows that happened. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Becky. Uh, Diane? Uh, Mr. Ballesteri, I was wondering if uh, you foresee any other expenses beyond the 700000 or do you think this would be a complete package? Um, Diane, I, I don't know the answer to that question because uh, invariably there always seems to be some unknown uh, that comes up uh, once a, a roof is opened. Um, but I, 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 you know, uh, I, I want to say yes, everything is going to follow that dollar value. We did in the bid package allow contractors to provide unit costs for additional work that may be incurred as a consequence of deteriorated conditions that are not visible, um, which would be decayed wood nailers or bad roof drains. Um, bad roof deck, that sort of thing. Those items do come up from time to time on re-roof projects. So there may be some additional costs, but I, I, at this point, I don't think there would be anything of any significance. Okay, thank you. And um, how, how long do you think this project would be and when can you start? Well, is there start, anything else that has to be done before you can do that or before the company can begin? Ma'am, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm having difficulty hearing you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, how long would this project take to from beginning to end if we it, uh, it, it may take up to 120 days. Um, that's part of the contractor's submittal okay. once the uh, a contract is let, but it can't start obviously until the contractor has a contract in hand and the materials are ordered and delivered. Um, but that gives us enough time to do the pre-planning um, at the site. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, Patty, did you have your hand up? Yeah, this this also does include the elevator shaft, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's just making sure because I know that was in our original thing. I just want to make sure it still was included. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Okay. Uh, any any other questions? I have another couple, but uh, uh, Becky, I think your hand was up next, and then Carolyn. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm something about the copper, um, the copper fascia cost. We're not going with the copper because it was more expensive and not designed as well, correct? Yes, it doesn't conform to the building code in terms of wind uplift resistance. Okay. But on the, on the upside of that is that we're going to save $27,500. Um, uh, Be Becky, I don't know that, that number for sure. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm just reading what I have on the paper, but it looks like we're saving a lot of money because we're not going with copper. Is that right? Oh, yes. There's going to be a significant savings, certainly. Yes. Okay. Okay, Carolyn? I just want, before we leave, um, before we leave Becky's comments, I just want to say that the, uh, the 27500 is a real savings, but it's already been factored into the bids. 
-hmm. So in other words, we won't see, a, uh, you know, right. the library won't see a $27,500 discount off of the 716. Oh, thank you, Greg. That's a good point. Yes. But however, the, uh, the salvage value is still to be determined. So that will come back, which right. won't, it certainly won't meet 27,000, but it'll be something. Okay, Carolyn, did you have your hand up? Um, yes, I did. Um, I have a few questions. Um, I noticed that um, there was a completion of proposal form, which included dollar amounts, all of the, um, at least the, the bidders that I'm looking at, they all submitted them. And the dollar amounts were for four general categories. What was unclear to me is just by looking at these four categories, I really didn't get any information that was specific as far as the actual roofing materials that each bidder was using. Um, for example, um, I think I was looking at complete, they, they were awarded the bid. And um, I, I don't really know what insulation they're using. And I um, also don't know the roofing um, manufacturer for the membrane. Usually, I thought this information was provided, and I was wondering, I, I actually read all the documents and didn't see it anywhere. How would we know that? Carolyn, on the bid forms, um, uh, there is, uh, the, the question is, what is the base bid? So the idea is you, you need to give us a number for the base bid, and the base bid manufacturer for the membrane and all of the materials supplied by the same manufacturer was fiber tight. We also offered what we believed to be uh, uh, real uh, alternatives uh, in terms of the bids, uh, uh, alternative number one and an alternative number two. One was uh, for Carlisle systems, which the insulation would be provided by Carlisle. And the third one was a Sarnafil system, which would be the same thing. All materials need to be supplied by a, a single source. So that, that is in term, what, so some contractors bid the base bid, some contractors provided numbers for the base bid plus both alternates, and other contractors provided numbers for simply the alternate or one or two of the alternates. And so in the, there's a document I submitted that just base, gives a real brief basic uh, system. So complete is, is uh, bidding the Carlisle system. Uh, two other uh, companies also bid the Carlisle system. And um, Knickerbocker, Riddiford, and Sealtight all bid fiber tight. Uh, they may also have provided alternate bids uh, as well. Okay, I'm looking at complete and I don't see any dollar amounts wasn't uh, Carlisle an alternate? Yes, it was. Okay, I don't see any numbers here. Um, I don't I, actually uh, have their bids in front of me. Well, these are the copies that we received from you. It's towards the back because most of them X them out. So I saw that, but then I noticed complete, I don't see any dollars um, in, it's in these spaces. So I was wondering, um, how we knew what manufacturers they were going with. But you did say fiber tight was the base. I wasn't aware of that. Um, yes, okay. that, was, that was the base bid. Okay, so I don't see um, the numbers here for, for complete. Uh, but I have a few other questions if I could um, ask. Sure, uh, four, yep, yep. In the four categories, you had a category for demolition and construction. And um, I was wondering, Oh, actually, demolition is separate. So is demolition just the um, elevator shaft or is that all the demolition? Well, the I, I, I would assume that it would be the all of the tear off and the demo work that's involved. So the elevator shaft is included in these numbers because I noticed it was written separately. It wasn't part of all your, um, what did you call your... Um, your sections where all the details were provided for materials. I saw a handwritten 
um, description from you regarding the um, elevator shaft. So I just wanted to know where that was included in these numbers. I mean, were they directed to include it under demolition or is it under new construction? I mean, how do we know what these numbers represent? Well, the numbers represent the scope of the project as defined by the specifications and the building plans. Um, and that is what they are expected to provide. Um, that's what they're going to be held to. Um, the, that's that's the, the, the roadmap. Okay, then, um, then I had another question um, regarding the copper edge. Um, that's being removed, or fascia, I think is the correct term. Um, I was wondering, why is, does the copper edge need to be removed? I wasn't sure I was understanding that correctly. The copper edge needs to be removed in order to accommodate additional insulation thickness, and in order to uh, simply install the membrane uh, appropriately across the parapet and the, the top of the wall. Um, so that's, that's the main reason right there. So is the additional insulation the reason why we can't, the um, copper um, edging or fascia no longer fits because it's going to be higher? Well, that's so certainly we one reason, yes. Do we know what we're going from and to as far as insulation? To cause that? I mean, there's got to be a reason and I was just curious about it. Sure. Uh, well, during the survey of the condition of the roof uh, last fall, I think, um, the or maybe last spring, uh, it was determined that each of the roof areas had varying insulation thicknesses. And currently, they don't meet the energy code. And so we need to in increase the amount of insulation across the roof, and that will raise the increase the thickness of the roof and as a consequence, increase the thickness of the roof edge, and then the copper would no longer cover. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was the case, um, or if the copper um, bowed, or, or, or when you needed to remove it to put the insulation in, that's when it, the copper was no longer useful. But I guess the thickness of the insulation is the primary reason. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, and then I think you already mentioned this, as far as the salvage value of the copper, that'll be determined later, correct? Yes. Okay, and then I had a question. What is the cost for the installation of the steel anodized fascia? I didn't see a total for that. I saw a letter from you with some, you know, suggestions or some, some numbers, but no totals. So have we decided what that new uh, fascia will cost us? Mm -hmm. Uh, not specifically, no, it would be part of the overall bid by the contractor. Isn't that where it says it's $12 per linear feet for the steel instead of the copper? There isn't a total, so I wasn't sure he was giving me the specifics or that was just a possibility. Okay. But if it's in the specs, if it's in the pricing from the, um, see, that's what's confusing. You have four categories here, and we really don't know for sure what these categories cover. So and that's why I'm asking. I, I, and you're referring to the actual bid document, is that correct? Oh, uh, yes. It's well, it's called proposal form, and they had to fill in all those totals, and then it gives a little breakdown about four pages, or no, this one's only one page. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what the cost was, so we don't know that. And those numbers in that letter then are just an approximate amount? We, th there was a letter that was sent to generally discuss the difference between trying to reuse the copper as opposed to using the, the Kynar finished steel. Um, right. That was not, that was separate from the, the, the bidding of the work that was designed. And so um, at this point, we could ask the contractor to provide the, the, a number, if he could break out what the actual cost of the steel is. 
Um, but that would have been a line item that we, I suppose we could have included. It's not typically done um, to find out specifically what the cost of the steel is. Um, but, but that wouldn't change their bid, Mr. Belster, would, would it? And, no, that wouldn't change your bid at all. So, so the bottom line remains the same. The reason right. for my question. Yes, ma'am. The reason for my question is that we're going to have a total savings of $27,500. And I'd like to know if that's our savings, what's the cost for the new fascia? And then there's a salvage value. So these we're throwing these numbers around and I'm trying to figure out how they all like sort of coordinate the, together. So so what we're doing is we're talking about a, 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 a a summary or proposed, uh, an estimated uh, value of steel versus copper. I know that there was a letter that went out for that. I'm sorry, I don't have that in front of me. No, um, no problem. Yeah, but but that's all based on you know what the current pricing is um, for steel versus copper at any given moment, and so that we were using an, an estimated values best you know best numbers that we could. Now, again, to get the, a real number, we could go to the contractor and say, what is the number? What number are you using? What did it really come out to? And, you know, that'll, that'll tell us what the exact number is. Well, I think if, knowing if what, but, but again, that won't change their bid. Their bid is what it is. Right. Correct? Yes. I'm yeah. not interested in that. I'm trying to verify the savings. I don't know how I could verify savings if I don't actually know the initial cost, but I, I don't want to belabor this. So we don't know the actual cost for that anodized still. That's fine. Okay, we, then we have est like estimated estimated costs. What we do know is that it costs less than the copper. For sure. I know, but that's still a generality. Okay, if I could move on. All right, then um, there, I noticed that two of the bidders were indicated as it was insufficient due to lack of tapered insulation. Um, and I was trying to figure out, based on these bid submittals, how did you determine that they didn't include tapered insulation? I, I couldn't identify that. They, they told us that. They told you they didn't include it? Correct. When we, we estimated the project originally somewhere around $900,000 originally. Right. And when we saw the spread from six hundred dollars to nearly a million dollars, we said, uh-oh, something's not right here. Um, so let's just make sure everybody is on the same page. And so the, the bidding contractors were surveyed, and three of them were determined that they did not include the tapered insulation, and three of them were determined that they did include the tapered insulation. You know I, said, I think I, I supplied. I think I supplied the letters from the contractors who did. You did. Uh, as part, as we part have of that. Our, yeah. Okay. Okay. We've got that. Right. So I was wondering. I had another question about the tapered insulation. Do we know about how much that came to? That it caused such variations in these um, bid totals? No. No. Okay. So. We have two bids at 600,000 and apparently they did not include all, all right, let me just move on. Okay, I happened to call some of these bidders and I understand that there had been some issues about the tapered insulation um, not being on the drawings. I guess there were several bidders who had issues with um, not being able to identify tapered insulation and I guess as many places as was expected. Um, I know the specifications did say to, to refer to the drawings, but apparently the drawings didn't indicate that. Um, I understand some of these contractors raised the questions when you were all walking the roof, but unfortunately, I think they said they spoke to the consultant, but were not given answers as to where on the um, drawings were, were, were these extra tapered insulation. Um, then I also, um, there's a discrepancy on three roof areas. They don't see it in the um, 
specifications as consultant or in specs, consultant couldn't tell us. Um, one of the, um, one of the uh, contractors also mentioned that they called you and that you had hung up on them. And some, another contractor was claiming that they couldn't get their questions answered. So what I, what I, my takeaway from this was that there were many contractors who had issues with the tapered insulation. And I, I guess I was taken back initially to see that two of them were the lowest bidders. And my experience with bidding is that they would have been confronted and that would have been something they would have resubmitted in a bid. But I see that didn't take place here. But what I'm most concerned about is that I talked with different bidders and they all had issues trying to get information regarding the tapered insulation, whether they couldn't get a response from you or, or a return telephone call or that um, someone else says it just simply wasn't clear what they wanted taper insulation other than saddles and crickets. So um, I really am disappointed in that because I'd like to think that everyone who came out to bid for the library was able to accomplish at least the answers to their questions. Um, but um, I'll, I'll move on because- um, Well, I'd like to uh, interrupt and, and say something. As board members, we really shouldn't be individually contacting contractors. It's really not proper for individual okay. board members to go around and talk to various contractors. We really need to go not? Through, the decision. through the company that we have designated as the one to collect bids and to give out information because it's important that everyone, all the bidders get the same consistent information. And that's why the that's addendums great. went out to all the bidders. It told them what they needed to know. Uh, it's, it's really not proper for certain bidders to get other information and certain bidders to make various complaints to different board members. It's really uh, sets up problems. Okay, with all due respect as a trustee, I do need to reach out and get information that I may need. Um, I don't, but anyway, I'll move on. Um, another um, question I have is, um, I understand that there is, there's an issue with um, roofing materials in general, just nationwide, um, not only from the pandemic, but um, well, the pandemic obviously initiated it, but between the delays and limit availability, um, I understand there's increased costs due to the pandemic as well as the weather situations like hurricanes have really burdened the supply chains. And my most concern right now is here we are in the middle of this not so stable um, market and we're entertaining the possibility of going through this process. Um, I think we could, we could be assured there are many, many um, roofing projects that would have priority over ours because they've already been delayed. So I am quite concerned about how risky just engaging in this um, roofing project right now could be. Um, I also um, wanted to mention, I think according to this document, um, according to our board packet, we are approving a contract. I think that's what the terminology is, but this is not a contract. This is actually just a bid. And um, in terms of protecting the library, I would um, like to see the contract before we approve the contract so we can make sure that um, we have a mutual severability clause protecting the library from whatever may occur without any cost being charged to the library. Again, this is probably not the best time to consider a major roofing project like this with all the problems um, in the roofing industry. So I, I would strongly recommend that we receive the contract and then approve it, which may, may take longer than, than today's um, uh, board meeting. And um, I would also remind you that for a $700,000 roofing job, 
um, there may be more questions that could be answered by the new board since they will be inheriting this. And I think in all honesty, they probably should be part of this discussion. Unfortunately, we, we didn't schedule this to include them as well. Um, but I would like to motion that we table the roofing decision until the next board meeting and until we can get a copy of the contract, which I believe that our attorneys usually have to review. Isn't that been the procedure in the past with these um, contracts? And yes, then the attorney would review it. That is correct. So the contract has not been created yet? No. Based on these bids, since there's, they, they seem to be pretty similar with the exception of price. Okay, and then I had one last question. As far as the amount of money that the bidders, um, I forgot what the terminology is, it's 10% of the bid um, they have to put up. Um, is that insurance? I forgot what the term is. Surety. Is it a surety company that we get 10% that each bidder has to put up in order to even bid this project? So they yes. all have, we have money. Okay. And that's another reason I would like to think that the bidders who had questions about the, the lack of clarity in these papered insulations would have had an opportunity to be, um, to have gotten responses because they worked hard at submitting the bid, plus they put that money up. So I, I, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm sorry, may, I, may I interrupt just one second? You, there's a motion on the table right now. Carolyn has made a motion to table. There shouldn't actually be any discussion going on now. You have to vote that up and there is no discussion. Well, no, no, we don't because no one has seconded it. So okay. it's not a valid motion. There has been no second. So uh, it's not uh, it's not an actual motion. I just no. thought for, at least for the sake of the minutes, it needed to be finished. In one way Thank or another. Thank you. Okay. Oh, there's no second. Any questions? Okay. All right. Um, I have a couple questions of um, Mr. Balistrieri too. And first, I, I just want to preface my remarks by just a little history on this matter. Uh, we've been talking about replacing the roof for two years. This goes back to the spring of 2019 when we've been discussing that. And we've had, you know, we've quite a few discussions during the meetings of the spring and uh, summer of 2019. And by the fall of 2019, December of 2019, we had received a report uh, sent to Dave Dabrowski. And this was from uh, Tony Whittingham at that time. And at that time, and again, this is a year and a half ago, we received a long report, pictures of the roof, everything we needed to do. So. A year and a half ago, we were really we were already getting reports about the roof problems, and we were thinking about what we needed to do, exploring what we needed to do, discussing that, and so forth. And so then uh, we um, began interviewing um, contractors who would our consultants, and we did that throughout a long period of time too. In December, uh, or rather in March. March of 2020, again, over a year ago, um, BEC, Mr. Balistrieri, you uh, proposed the consulting service. And, and you were a number of, a number of companies that proposed consulting services. And we spent many meetings going through the consulting services and the bids of the consultants. And for a while, we were also looking at solar roof consultants. We looked at that for a while. We ultimately rejected that. But it was about a year ago that we chose BEC. And, and so throughout that period of time, we've been continuing to research roofs, research roof solutions, and so forth. And then it was in December of 2020. Um, and uh, again, that was quite a few months ago. Well, a few months ago, we had a meeting when we went through an enormous packet of information and looked at photos of every square inch of the roof, we looked at diagrams of the roof. We explored everything that needed to be done. We went around the table and talked about what every single person, what every single person thought we should do in terms of the approach to re uh, repairing the roof. So we've already spent about two years uh, thinking about the roof, researching the roof, 
determining what we should do about the rough. Um, because we started, we started two years ago, I presume during that time, the roof has not gotten any better uh, and the condition it's in has, would it be correct to say, Mr. Ballesteri, it's probably, if anything, decayed a little bit more? Oh, sure, every year, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so um, we are heading into construction season now, is that right, the summertime? Yep. All right, and we have bids from companies who are willing to do that this work this summer. Would that be correct? Yes. All right. Now, if there is any further delay in selecting bidders, uh, is it possible we would not get this roof done this summer? Yes. And our roof would have to make it through yet another winter without being repaired? Possibly, yes. All right. Um, the bids that we received, how, how long are they good for? That is, do they expire on a certain date or do we know? I, I think uh, we held them to 90 days. Okay. All right. And we've had them for what, 30 days now? Not quite? Not quite. Okay. All right. Um, if, if the bids expire, and we had to rebid. Do you have any opinion as to whether or not we would get as many bidders, uh, if the bids would be higher or lower, or really is it not possible to make an educated guess about that? Well, it, it, it would seem uh, that the bids are out. The bids are public. Um, and so the numbers are there. Um, so, you know, there's going to be contractors at the high end of that of that spectrum that are looking at it going, oh, my gosh, we're way high. How the heck are we going to come back on that? And I can't imagine why they would bother rebidding the project. I, you know, I, I can't answer that question. But with the numbers already out on the street, it would be a difficult thing to do. So what happens when the numbers are out, out on the street already? Can you tell that? How does that affect a project if you need to rebid it? Well, simply the perception by the bidding contractors of knowing where they had originally come in versus where other people have come in on the same bid, uh, knowing what uh, products may or may have been missed. Uh, that's already now public knowledge uh, by other bidding contractors. Um, it muddies the waters. I mean, it doesn't mean that it can't be rebid. We can invite other contractors and see if we can possibly get them to cooperate on a schedule that is beneficial to the library. Um, I, I really don't know. I mean, it, it becomes kind of murky. And um, do you have any um, information uh, based on industry reports as to whether or not the cost of construction materials is going to continue to go up? Or not? I, I, I don't. No, I do not. Okay. All right. All right. I, I'll open the floor to other board members who may have uh, additional questions that occurred to them. All right. Do uh, we have any further uh, information from in-house? Uh, has Mr. Dabrowski been up in the roof lately or any other further uh, comments about that. I, I don't anticipate that he would have, but if he by any chance had any further information, I just wanted to know that. I don't believe so. Okay. All right. He is in the meeting. If you want me to move him in to talk, I don't know. Um, no, not unless you think that he I, has I actually been he up there not. lately to see if there's any further uh, problems up on the roof in addition to what we were already aware of. Okay. All right, well then, um, then I think that we need to vote. Um, I remember when you're voting, if there's anyone who wants to uh, explain why their vote is going one way or another, um, now's the time to do it. Otherwise, I think we just need to vote yes, or no on this uh, packet. Carolyn? I, I just want to look. Go ahead, uh, Linda's after you. Okay, I just wanted to um, 
um, add some information to your questions. Um, there are numerous um, roofing industry sites that you can go on and they're repeatedly talking about the, the delay in roofing materials, the increase in cost. It, there, is, there has not been a decrease in sites and they're concerned that this will continue. So I, I just wanna make it clear, whether you approve this roof tonight or you approve, you approve it next month, the delays in roofing materials are already backlogged. So this, this decision isn't going to better a market industry that's already hurting. I just wanted to make you aware of that. And then in regards to the numerous inspections and roofing reports we received since 2019, yes, that's absolutely true. But remember, all the reports came back with minor issues to the roof. So this-, this No, I don't think so. And, yes, I, I, it's factual. You'd have, no, you'd have uh, to no, I don't think it is. Okay, well, I know it is because I brought it up at every meeting. So that would well, be why one of the recommendations- You might have said that. No, one of them, that's why one of the recommendations wasn't a tear off. So again, to go through this massive, you know, tear off and replacement, you know, we then we have to worry about the materials. I, I find it risky, but I just wanted to clarify those comments. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Linda Ryan. Hi, um, I just believe with Mr. Balistrieri, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, I do believe now that the bids are out, it does muddy the waters. And I do also think that the prices are gonna go up. And with the one bid being as low as it is compared to the other two, um, I just can't see that with the construction and with prices going up so much that we could possibly even get a better price. So um, I'm looking at it from what I've been seeing around too, that the prices of materials are going up and construction is going up. And yes, I do understand that supplies may be hard to get, but that's why ours should go in there so we get ours first and we get it done. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Excuse me. Um, yes, I just Carol. have one one question for Mr. Ballesteri. He did mention that he can't guarantee that there won't be additional costs incurred when they get up on the roof should they find something that needs to be replaced. Is it possible that there will be additional costs incurred with the um, increase in materials skyrocketing? Will that affect us or are we locked into that price? You're, you're, that price is good for at least 90 days from the date okay. of the bid. Curious. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I, I agree with Linda that uh, 716,000 actually is less than we anticipated we were gonna have to pay. We were originally told this was gonna cost around us $900,000, I think, for yeah. this approach. So I think this was actually uh, a good surprise, this particular, a low bid, um, and uh, it's it's substantially less than the others. It's a reputable company. Uh, I'm glad to see it, and I think that uh, if it was rebid, this company might bid higher next time. They, you know, as Carolyn says, costs are continuing to go up. They may feel if they have to bid again, they're just gonna they're not gonna be able to come in at such a low price again. So I think it's actually a pretty good price to snap up. And, and I understand why uh, new board members might wanna look at this, but I have to reiterate, this board has been looking at it for two years, two years worth of meetings we've been talking about the roof. And I, I feel if you, the new board members, took as much time as we have taken to look at the roof, it'll be another two years before you get to the point where we are in terms of examining consultants, examining types of roofs, actually looking at all the photos, at the drawings, at everything we've done. If we just uh, kick the can down the road, the roof is gonna continue to deteriorate. And I, I don't know when it's gonna get replaced. And I, I understand new board members might not be ready to vote on it because they have not been able to spend the time with this roof issue 
that we've been spending with it. They have not heard all the experts we've heard. They haven't heard all the consultants that we've heard. They haven't looked at all the drawings. And, and of course, I wouldn't expect them to be able to do that or to have done that. So I, I think this is sort of our job to finish something that we started. It's not just a quick little decision. It's not something that uh, can be done overnight. And, and again, if, if the new board takes as long as we did, another two years, you'll be on the verge of another election and then maybe you should wait for the board after that to make a decision, I would, you know, which would follow that logic. So in any event, uh, for those reasons, I think, I think we should um, vote on it this evening. And uh, you know, people obviously can, can vote uh, yes or no as they choose. Does anyone else want to make any other comments before we bid, before we vote on the bids? Okay, then um, I need a roll call, please. Yes, Patty. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Uh, yes. Carolyn? Uh, uh, no. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. That's it. Okay, that completes that item. Yeah. Uh, the next item on our agenda is um, regarding the sign out in front. I do I have a motion to award a contract not to exceed $34,231.25 from the Special Reserve Fund to replace the Watchfire electronic message board um, to install LED backlighting and replace the EMC on the library's monument sign. And again, this is the sign right at the corner of our lot. Do I have such a motion? Patty. Motion. And Diane is the second. All right, um, I don't think we have any visitors, uh, any experts here to talk about the sign. Do we, any? So, uh, Greg? Um, yeah, Rich was Nitschka. Uh, Rich was. I'm sorry, Karen. Rich was Nitschka is here to, uh, he did all the primary work on, um, oh. on the sign. So okay. we'd be happy to uh, walk us through uh, what we have here. Rich, uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening. And if you would explain why uh, replacing the sign is a little bit complicated and also start by, you know, describing the problems of the sign. I think many people see it. I mean, I've had people complain to me about the sign, telling me our sign looks terrible there in the corner. But if you could just start out with describing briefly what's wrong with the sign and what, takes to, what it takes to fix it. Sure, absolutely. Thank you for having uh, me on uh, this evening and being able to uh, address uh, this particular motion. Um, yeah, we uh, purchased the sign. Um, we had that sign installed many years ago, de decades ago, um, and back in October of 2007, um, the board approved um, a $32,750 um, electronic messaging center to be installed uh, into the existing monument sign. Uh, that is what you see uh, currently there. Uh, that electronic messaging center um, hardware is end of service life. Uh, as of June 30th of 2020, so last year, uh, and we're no longer able to get new panels, um, any kind of service uh, in order to replace burned out panels. Um, so up till that point in time, uh, I believe there uh, was nine events uh, over the course of uh, the 13 plus years that we've had that electronic messaging center operational. Um, we replaced, you know, uh, numerous panels that uh, needed to be replaced, um, some temperature sensors and other minor things. Uh, that I believe uh, totaled about. Um, let me just scroll down here. Uh, Fifteen thousand six hundred forty-four dollars. Um, we would, you know, gladly continue to do the minor update uh, on the sign if that was possible. Um, sometime last year. Uh, we found that, you know, we were, as I alluded to, uh, with the end of service life, we were not able to continue to um, update the sign as in repair the sign. Um, and so you see the primary um, 
issue is that the south uh, facing side um, has 15 panels and you can see that there are uh, at least seven or eight panels on that side. It's a total of 10 uh, all around um, that are not operational. So the sign is made up of 15 uh, one foot by one foot sections uh, on each side. Um, so each panel normally would get replaced if there was burned out uh, uh, illumination units on there, LEDs, um, and we can't, we can no longer do that. Um, so that's, that's where it is. Um, when we looked at this, we looked at our options. Um, we looked at uh, other municipalities, what they have done. Um, one of the uh, contacts that I uh, went to was the uh, Village of Niles. They recently, within the last year and a half, went uh, with a watchfire sign to replace the unit that was uh, very similar to what we have at the police department. Um, and so they, uh, we were starting to create a uh, um, uh, request for proposal so that we could get bids, uh, kind of like we do for all other projects. Um, and we were able to, uh, during that time, uh, find that a, um, a governmental joint purchasing uh, alliance uh, went out to bid uh, nationally for uh, electronic messaging centers. Um, so we looked at that. Uh, we're eligible to be able to utilize that um, through the state of Illinois uh, uh, statutes. Uh, so we went ahead. Uh, that is called Koalas Group. Um, and um, coincidentally, as a little side note, the lead agency that ran um, that particular bid um, it was started by a, uh, a library uh, out in Ohio. So um, it's, uh, it's pretty nice to see that, uh, you know, libraries helping, helping libraries. Um, this is the Cooperative Council of Governments. Uh, anyway, there was five bids uh, that were um, uh, submitted and evaluated. Uh, Watchfire Signs out of Illinois, uh, it's an Illinois company, um, uh, was awarded the bid, uh, the lowest um, and uh, qualified bid for that. Um, and so we also have Watchfire um, looking around um, at some of the bids that have come in. Obviously we, eight, 13 years ago, had a Watchfire sign. We have it installed. Uh, we have staff that are trained on it. We have uh, any upgraded communication network on that sign back from 2017 that we could reutilize. Um, and a number of institutions around here uh, who had, went out to bid uh, have gone to watch fire signs as well. So it's a reputable company. Um, you know, they guarantee the sign to have uh, replacement parts available for 10 years. Uh, five years is the warranty um, for the sign itself. And we found that uh, with the watch fire sign we had, we had five years of good, uh, you know, nothing really went wrong with it. Uh, and anything that uh, could would have been covered. And then for over 13 years, they had parts for us. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's just time for that sign to be replaced. Uh, looking at the, uh, the specs, um, we looked at, you know, okay, so we need the sign replaced. Um, we looked at whether or not it was possible just to replace a particular side. Um, so we did, you know, due diligence to kind of figure out how to, um, you know, not incur the total cost of replacing all the sides. Um, after, uh, we spoke with uh, well, Watchfire and with uh, Aurora Sign Company. They indicated that in the long run, it's gonna be more expensive due to the fact that we can't, no one can tell us when those other sides will start breaking. Um, and the only spare parts we would have would be a total of four panels for 30 panels that would be in operation. Um, and each time you, you know, replace the side, it's more expensive if you do it piecemeal. Um, so we took uh, that into consideration, and um, we also looked at what kind of technology is available, um, chiefly the fact that uh, there's color signs now. Um, so the proposal in front of you is um, actually just slightly less expensive than uh, the 13-year-old sign, um, and the resolution has greatly increased uh, from about... 256 LEDs per each of those uh, one foot squares to uh, 900 uh, LEDs. So you have crisper resolution 
meaning that you can put more message text on each side. Uh, so you don't have to have someone sitting there and trying to follow each uh, particular uh, message that's multi-page um, and then oh, they drive away. So you kind of lose some of the conveyance of what you're trying to convey uh, when that happens. So a higher resolution, I'm gonna pause because of the library announcement. And wash or sanitize your hands often. And so uh, <clears throat> with the higher resolution and full color, you basically have a better platform to convey messages, um, the, the, the central purpose of that sign. Um, and at the same time, we did look at the fact that we do have some high um, wattage bulbs in there that um, you know every few years we need to replace as they burn out. They use a lot of electricity. They also cause heat, uh, which is uh, you know a negative impact on the electronic messaging center uh, boards, uh, especially during hot summer nights. Um, so it just uh, would be better that we upgrade that to an LED. Uh, type of backlighting. Uh, so we also have that included in the uh, the proposal. Um, and we wanted to just make sure that uh, we also provided you with information um, as what a newer, same style, basically one color, um, same resolution um, configuration would be. Um, and that's also presented as a separate quote uh, with the LED uh, retrofitting. So that's for your consideration um, tonight. Um, Rich, would you explain what you just said one more time? A separate quote. I'm, uh... Sure. There's, would you um... would you point out the two amounts? I, you know, I've got a lot of paperwork here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the one amount, the total amount, which uh, what doesn't change between these two totals is the LED retrofit. Uh, the total amount uh, is thirty-four thousand two hundred thirty-one dollars and twenty-five cents for the higher resolution full color unit. Okay. And then for exactly the same um, unit that we have now, obviously it's new. Um, it is a little bit better with terms of the technology for it to breathe and stay cooler, uh, but it still has the same resolution. So visually it would look the same. That is $24,349.32. It's under the section other EMC replacement option. Did that address your question? Um, I think so. Let me. Karen, it's on the, um, it's like on this. the back page. Yeah, the Aurora, I, yeah. I see that, yeah. All right, I'm going to let other members of the board ask uh, questions at this time. Um, would anyone like to proceed with any questions they have? Carolyn? Um, Rich, did you mention um, some of the panels are out now? Is that what you said? Uh, yes, so if you take a look oh, yeah. um, at the new business recommended actions um, memorandum, you'll see uh, one, the south and the north west facing uh, side. And you can see uh, in the picture uh, what those squares that are out and all the little LED, individual LEDs that are not illuminated. It, it should look the same as the north, uh, west facing, the one on the left, all, all illuminated and it does not. Okay, so there's a total of 15 panels, correct? Did I understand that correctly? Uh, there is a total, I believe of 14, 10 on the south facing side and four, uh, four of which um, are completely non-functional. So you can see uh, okay. there's three across sort of the, like the middle of the sign because there's three rows, uh, five columns. So it, um, you, know, you can't really tell what the message is on that side. Okay, so four non-functional. And, and you said you can't replace the bulbs anymore, correct? They, they are no longer available? 
Uh, we can't replace the LED panels that uh, make up the electronic message center. Uh, so okay. the sign, the digital sign component. Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, Absolutely. So um, do Carolyn, do you want me to go ahead or are you ready to ask no, another I question? More. Um, you know what? Um, I was thinking this is this is a major purchase. Um, and since we will be reviewing our budget in May, I thought this should be held over for the budget because it, it is an amount that we should probably consider when creating our budget as well. And, and it's not an emergency expense at the moment and May is just one month away. So I would suggest that we include this in our budget discussions next month. And um, I, I think you also mentioned, um, Rich, that you've gotten the quotes from a governmental bidding process, correct? Um, correct. From the state or something? Okay. So um, they came up with the, the best price. I believe that's how that goes. All right. And then one other point that was brought to my attention, this is noted on the agenda to be paid from special reserves. I was told this item cannot be paid out of special reserves. And um, so I was given the um, Illinois state statutes, which I've read, and it repeatedly talks about that special reserves are used for buildings and renovations and, and um, additions and any, um, any materials like books or, or, or um, even shelving, anything that would be needed to go into the renovated space could be paid from the um, um, special reserves, but this could not. And then I recalled- Carolyn, where is that information from that uh, you're quoting? I L C S 75. But I just want to bring up a yeah, situation. That's the whole chapter. Um, it's five, five. Uh, it's um, five one, five two. It, it goes from five one to five five. But what I wanted to mention: Do you recall? I think for most, well, a few of us that are on the board, we um, purchased the van. It's been a while, and I think at that time the plan was to pay for that out of the special reserves. And we were told we couldn't do that. And the attorney agreed. So it had to come out of the general fund. So I'm wondering when I compare it to that, it is quite possible that we may need to take this out of general funds. So I just wanted to bring that up to all of you. Ray, um, do you have uh, any opinion as to whether or not, or Rich, if you have any opinion as to whether or not we could take a sign out of special reverse. It seems like it's it's a fixed structure. It's a type of thing that's often on a building. It seemed like we could, but tell me if you have any uh, thoughts as to whether or not there's any question that we can take this out of special reserves. Uh, I agree with your assessment, Karen. Um, you know, it is you know uh, part of the uh, part of the building. We also uh, we also pay for uh, equipment, the IT equipment such as the servers and the switches, and when we replace the uh, fleets of uh, uh, desktop computers, we've taken that out of special reserve in the past as well. So um, I mean, it's it's always worth looking at the um, looking at the uh, statutes and checking with the attorney to make sure. But um, that's my understanding is that it's a special reserve type expense. Okay. All right. Um, Rich, I had another question because this, this was just a little unclear to me because we have two proposals from Aurora Company. One is for $24,000 and one is for $34,000. And um, which, which one is IT actually recommending? I mean, it, was, it just really wasn't clear to me which one you're recommending and why. Sure. So uh, we're recommending the 10 millimeter full color uh, looking around. Um, and which one would that be? That is the 34,000. All right. And why? Uh, so 
in the uh, motion, we indicated a number of reasons. One was the minimum viewing distance um, uh, is 23 feet or greater on the 10 millimeter. Um, so it encompasses from the sidewalk all the way through the entire intersection where um, going higher to like a 16 or a 19, which is the single color that we have as the second uh, bid to do something with the sign uh, and still offer the EMCs uh, on them. Uh, they come at 38 feet for the 16 millimeter and 60 feet. So our current sign, the electronic mesh center, uh, the recommendation is to view that sign 60 feet away uh, or greater. Um, so it's sort of, you know, in order to incorporate the entire intersection, um, the 10 millimeter now is something that uh, is being offered. Uh, and it uh, would, again, uh, allow people to see it through the entire intersection and including on the sidewalk. Um, where at the time that we bought it 13 years ago, um, we could get the, six, the that, that 19 inch um, or the 19 millimeter, which is what we have exist, existing. Uh, but again, that's a distance of 60 feet or greater. Uh, that's the recommended viewing for that type of sign. Um, beyond that, um, the 10 millimeter higher resolution uh, offers more message text to be visible. So uh, typically public relations and marketing services staff uh, need to make multiple uh, page messages uh, as the text does not fit on it. Um, so on a single page, you can get three lines of text um, with the current sign um, and the higher resolution sign that's being recommended will allow up to five uh, rows of text to be included on a single page. Um, so we can fit more, since we can fit more uh, of a message onto a single page, you don't have to string along multiple pages and then each page needs to be how, you know, a number of seconds displayed so that the reader can actually, the viewer can see it and read it. Um, and so it makes the, the whole message, you know, maybe 20 seconds long, as opposed to being up for 20 seconds, all the data right there, all the contents of the message. Um, so that, you know, the patron doesn't basically uh, drive off where they got, oh, something's happening on um, or the name of a, an event, but they never got the information as to when it was taking place uh, because they had to wait for the second page to, to cycle through. Um, uh, and with, uh, again, the same, the same thing goes with the higher resolution. What you get is uh, full color. Uh, you get clearer fonts. You can uh, increase the, the types of graphics that are being used. Uh, you can do short videos on there and you can actually see what's going on. Um, as opposed to what we have on the 19, where you, you really just use it as a text-based uh, message board. Um, so you don't really get the variety of graphics um, or the resolution. So that's what's being recommended. It's, you know, obviously the board's decision as to, you know, whether we can uh, upgrade to something like that, um, maintain what we have um, with that second option uh, or something else entirely. So the Aqualis Group, that is the cooperative purchasing organization. Yes. Can we purchase this through their uh, organization, either one, either the $24,000 or the $34,000 option? Yes. Yeah, so uh, they um, had one of their lead agencies, the Co Cooperative Council of Governments, CCOG, go out to bid uh, nationally. Uh, right. There was those five bids. They awarded Watchfire. And so the entire catalog is available to us. It depends on the configuration. Um, the recommendation is that the, you know, I did not, I believe, did I, did not, yeah, I included the fact that they have uh, six millimeter, eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, 16 millimeter um, resolutions for the color. And then on the single color, amber or red, uh, they Rich, only have your, your voice is fading oh, in and I out. I apologize. So on the first page, um, under the memorandum, um, you'll see a little uh, chart uh, or yeah, a little uh, spreadsheet there that indicates full color, and you'll see the different resolutions. So it goes up, goes from uh, six, eight, ten, and sixteen on the color, and it goes nineteen for the single amber or single red color. 
Um, and what that means is it just varies the intensity of the light, but you just get the single color. So we chose the 10 uh, millimeter because it's where that technology is at this time. Um, so going with the 19 uh, maintains the exact technology that we bought 13 years ago. Um, doesn't enhance anything for the, from the patron perspective uh, where you know they the won't get a, a better message experience uh, seeing those messages. Um, so that's why we went, you know, those and all the other reasons I just stated, that's why we went with the 10 millimeter. All right. Okay. Um, do other board members have questions? Yes, Diane. Uh, thank you, Rich. Um, I consider this project uh, maintenance. Um, people can see this from all directions. And, uh, you know, I think that we put it up there, let's maintain it and let's improve it if we can. So it's going to be lasting another 10 years or whatever. If we improve it and um, the public can appreciate it, I think we should um, do this. And of course, check with our lawyer to make sure, as Carolyn says, that it is part of our uh, correct. It can be properly taken out of special reserve. Oh, Diane, you're uh, you're frozen now. I think. Yeah. Okay. I, maybe my screen is frozen. I don't know. Um, Carolyn. Yeah, check to make sure it can be taken out of a special reserve. I'm sorry, I need my cord now. Carolyn, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Um, apparently, there are maybe Carolyn, some I'm of the calling people. on you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I Okay, um, apparently um, some of the features in the sign that uh, Rich is describing are not um, um, allowed by the village. So I think we need to look further into this. So just to uh, add some information, um, we did approach the village uh, to make sure that the sign um, is conforming um, and okay. uh, they indicated that yes it is. Uh, we also um, do not need a special use permit. Um, uh, this is from the village it's them, themselves. So uh, we had uh, before so we. Who did you speak to at the village? I, I'm sorry, Carolyn, you broke up. Who did you speak to at the village? Um, I can give you the information. Uh, I can't recall at this particular time. Well, I'm just saying because I'm it getting was a from text the village code from department. So. All right, because I'm getting a text from one of the trustees that said that some of those features are not allowed by the village. So I think we better check Excuse it. Me? What did you say, Carolyn? I, um, I'm, I received a text from a trustee that some of those options are not allowed by the village. So oh. if we could check that as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd also like to... I'd like to motion that we table this for further discussion next month during our budget review. Um, some of the residents also have some other suggestions for that sign. Um, I'm not familiar with all the options, but I think um, with the questions that are occurring and since our budget is in one month, I I'd like to motion that we table this for our budget meeting next month. Susan, this uh, is, or Greg, perhaps I should ask, is this uh, included in our budget for this year in terms of um, special reserve funds that are available for this project? 
Um, I'd have to um, I'd have to check on that. Uh, I don't know um, I don't know specifically, and I don't have the details in front of me to uh, to do that. Uh, but I will say that there uh, there are there's plenty of money in the uh, there's plenty of money in the uh, special reserve fund. Uh, there's a balance of 3.8 million dollars. So um, uh, I'm sure it was in the long term. Uh, uh, recap that we put together a year or so ago. Uh, right, but Greg, can I ask you to stop speaking? You know, I'm I, the connection I'm getting right now is really bad. Susan, can you mute everyone? And yep. when I call on someone to speak, you can unmute yourself. I'm getting feedback. It's very bad. Okay. Okay, that's good. Now you have to unmute yourself, to, yeah. Aaron. Right, I just did that. Uh, Greg, can you tell us what you were just saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting uh, I'm getting feedback again, so I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, okay, so that seems to be better now, or maybe not. Uh, Susan, can can you mute uh, Karen, please? I'll mute myself. No, I I actually think it's an issue with Diane, though. She, but she's muted, but her light keeps coming on. Yeah, I don't know. Diane, do you have a phone going or something else going in your house? I don't know what to do. Keep talking over it. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, it's it's really hard to hear. Diane, um, would you want to log off and log back on again? Maybe that would help. Okay. Let's see. I don't hear that feedback now. Um, Carolyn, we did you want to say something? Yeah. Actually, um, the uh, video, do the village does not allow moving pictures. And I forgot the, the second thing. So we've got to, we got to get something in writing from the village because that sign is not um, acceptable. Um, uh, we actually have moving pictures now. So I don't, I don't understand. Okay, well, maybe, uh, maybe yeah, we've had that changed. for many years. I know, but I don't know what the code is. You're getting a brand new sign. So I, I'm just recommending that we look right. into so, that. So the sign is exactly what the village has already. Um, and the sign is exactly what um, is in the village with regards to, like literally the fire department has exactly the same sign that this will be. Uh, the same spec, okay. the 10 millimeter uh, for that. So uh, I did uh, look it up. Uh, I spoke with the director of community development, Charles Osman. Uh, as well as Micro Duran, uh, building department specialists, uh, with regards to uh, the sign. Um, I also uh, received uh, the bid documents, um, which mirror exactly what this sign will be that the village uh, posted. Uh, so the purchasing agent, uh, Susan Buss, over at the village uh, sent me those. Um, uh, also copied the IT director, Bill Shaw. Um, so we mimicked exactly what the village already has. Uh, uh, Put out for bid and also accepted and installed um, so it does not uh, you know it conforms to that okay I'm, I'm just I got another text so I sure just absolutely to you know as opposed to what is capable of the sign um, for example uh, as I indicated uh, moving video um, is capable of the sign whether or not that's allowed specifically or whether or not we would actually be doing that is a different story 
but the capabilities, the, the same sign that it is already installed at several locations, including the Village of Niles uh, Police Department is exactly what this sign will be. Okay, but you need to remember the, the um, ordinances or whatever the um, restrictions are, are based on a new installation because uh, somebody else has it. Does it necessarily uh, mean we can so, install it? Right. Uh, it, it's not a new installation. It's a repair. Um, so as we spoke with the village, uh, we indicated that the sign cannot be replaced, uh, cannot be repaired uh, with uh, the existing panels. Uh, and they, you can use check out sorry. feature to check out any item as uh, apologize for that. Uh, so we did check with the village. We indicated that we cannot replace the sign. Uh, we have to, uh, as in we can't repair it, we have to repair it by replacing the, the entire sides. Uh, and they indicated that that was perfectly within uh, our uh, ability to do that without going out to get any additional variance or uh, any kind of uh, special uh, consideration by the village. Okay, thank you, Rich. I think we need to move along. So Carolyn has expressed her opinion. Are the other members of the board uh, prepared to vote on this now, or would they want to address this one way or the other before we actually um, call this for a vote? We do have a motion on the table. So I wanna know if other members of the board are willing, to, are ready to vote. And I do see Becky's hand is up. Yeah, just a comment um, that, okay. yes. Can you hear me? I'm up. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, somewhat like what Diane said, the sign is seen by everyone who goes past that corner, not necessarily just people who live in our district. Uh, and it's really, it's the first impression of our library. And I think it's important that it looks decent. Uh, I certainly think that it needs to be working. Um, and I also think that we don't have to wait till things are emergencies to fix them. Because if you wait until something's an emergency, you're in a crisis mode, things are gonna be done, maybe not in the best way, maybe not in the most thorough way or researched way or most economic way. And I think it is very dutiful of us to consider all these things before they are an emergency. That's all. Does anyone else want to address um, this uh, matter uh, before, whether you're ready to vote or not, or whether you have any other comments about the, the substance of the proposal, one way or the other. I don't hear anything. Oh, wait, Linda. I'm sorry, Linda. Go ahead. That's okay. Um, I just say that's just another way, uh, another form, really our only other form besides our website that some people might not look at or our chapter one, I'm, I'm not able to hear, Linda. Are other people able to hear? No. Sound dropped out. Can everybody hear me or no? No, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. No. My internet is going in and out. But, um, but I just feel uh, same thing, that that really is important. That is our first, one of our first face values um, and our communication. And, and in order to get our word out on our programming, it's very important that that is kept up. Thank you. Thank you. I too have heard repeated complaints about our sign from people who drive past and say, what, what's wrong with your sign? Why don't you fix it? So I don't know. All right. All right. Um, I think we need to Can call I? the vote. Oh, uh, wait, I see okay. Diane. Do um, you hear me? Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. All right, Carolyn put forth a motion, but nobody seconded. Do we still vote on it? No, I can't hear you. No, no uh, we do so not vote on a motion unless it received a second. So that one did not have a second. The motion to approve the contract is still on the floor.
I second the motion to approve the law, the uh, purchase. I think you did second it. You did second it, I believe. I think it was Patty and yes. you, Diane, who made the first and the second of the motion. Patty and So Diane. that's on the floor now, and that's what we're gonna vote on. So Cindy, please call the roll. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. No. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Diane? Yes. Five yes, one no. Okay, thank you. Uh, as an aside, I'm not calling this for discussion right now, but uh, I think that we ought to soon consider going back in person because these Zoom meetings are giving me a headache. Um, I, you know, I, I, they're, it's been good to have them, but they're just a pain in some way. So, okay, let, but let's move on. Let's get through this. All right, the next thing on our agenda, I'm asking if anyone wants to make a motion to approve the appointment of and payment to Flex Landscaping uh, in the amount of these amounts for the years 21, 22, and 23, the amount of $6,140 for the first year, $6,290 for the second year, $6,440 for the third year for summer landscaping maintenance services. Uh, do I have such a motion? Uh, motion. Becky and Patty, or Linda, Becky and Pat. I'm sorry, Becky and Linda, I think, were our two movements. Okay, um, great. So I think this is a fairly uh, a clear, state, uh, you know, straightforward uh, matter here, not terribly complicated. I do have a question though. Um, I understand that they uh, made a proposal for three years. Susan, are they willing to um, sign a contract, do you know, for just one year? I mean, I, I feel like we've got to get someone to mow the, the lawn. Uh, I don't want to let that go. I don't want it to start looking really unkempt out there. Uh, but yet if a, a different board wants to use someone else for 22 and 23, I, you know, I don't care. Susan? I mean, uh, um, what you did with the Lauterbach and Amon, Amon, quote three years ago or two years ago it was a three-year quote but you uh still had to vote on it every year you could set it up that way okay all right are they willing to accept that flex landscaping we i don't know we would probably have to go back and ask them all right so we would vote uh, assuming we vote to approve it um uh, uh, perhaps we could have the motion amended to say we would approve this, assuming we can cancel or the new board can cancel the contract for 22 and 23. Is that uh, what you're saying we might be able to do? Yeah, what, uh, let me suggest, um, you know, why don't you uh, modify the motion as you see fit if you want to modify it so that it's only a one year. Um, it's a one-year uh, relationship. Why don't you go ahead and do that? And then we'll uh, talk to Mr. Fleck and uh, make sure that he understands that it's uh, it's one year, which may lead to uh, subsequent years on renewal. All right. And I suppose he could reject it and say, no, it's all or nothing. And then, you know, the next meeting, we'll have to decide what to do. Right. So um, the movement in the seconder, uh, would you accept uh, uh, what I think is a friendly amendment to um, pay for contract to uh, arrange for landscaping for just this year, this summer, with flex landscaping for $6,140? Yes. So I'm ask asking Becky and Linda if, uh, if you want to agree to amend your motion in that way. And, and you don't have to, it's up to you. Yes, it's fine. Linda says yes. And Becky, you're okay with yes. that too? Yes. 
All right, fine. Do we have any other discussion regarding the landscaping uh, matter? Carolyn. Um, the landscaping contract, Greg, uh, when does it begin? Um, it, it starts as soon what, as- This year, 2020? Yeah, it's for this summer. Okay. Um, again, our, right now. our budget meeting is next month in May. Um, and at that time, it would probably be better for the board to discuss if they want a one, two, or three-year contract. And again, the budget meeting is in May. I'd like to motion to table this um, contract for the May budget meeting. It looks like nobody wants to table it. Is that, again, what's going on? I think so. I mean, um, you, you know, if we do one year, you can always make a, a motion at the next meeting to extend the contract for two or three years. That's, you know, you can absolutely do that. But in the meantime, our grass will be cut, which is, I just don't want us to have a very shabby looking library uh, landscaping. I don't think Are there it's any that other questions uh, or I comments? Have I have a question. I noticed that Flex was given the bid results and award of contract for the most recent landscape maintenance. And then he turned around and he provided a, um, he bid on this contract and he was awarded the contract. I was wondering if the other bidders were given the same information when, before they placed their bid. I'm not sure I understand the question. Yeah, I don't either. Um, if in Susan's explanation, he mentioned that Flex requested, he FOIA'd the bid results and the award of contract for the most recent landscaping maintenance. After he got the information, he turned around and bid on this contract and was awarded. And I was wondering, did we extend the same information to the other bidders? Oh, okay. Um, so um, what happened is he asked for the previous years. Um, we did not bid this last year and we did not have a contract per se last year. So there was nothing to give him. Uh, we did uh, instead invite him to uh, submit a bid uh, that you saw in your packet. So, you know, there was there was really nothing to share with them and there was no advantage that uh, that went to him. Um, so when he asked for the most recent information, we didn't have any to give him? Right. Is that, was that what you're explaining? Yes. Okay. So why am I misunderstanding what Susan wrote? I thought she had an ex. Oh, he, it's under... Um, actually, it's under the um, it's under the FOIA request. Right. I believe she she gave him the information and then suggested he submit a bid. I, I said we replied by inviting him to bid. So you didn't give him the information, and I just misunderstood that. Right. Okay, that's fine because I just felt then that he would have an advantage over the other bidders. Okay. Well, thank you for clarifying. All right, um, well, all I can say is once again, um, the, the new trustees are coming in next month and I think this is a contract they should be deciding upon. I, I don't think one more month would, would really hurt our lawns, but um, that's all I have, thank you. Okay, um, Cindy, would you call, oh, I'm sorry, Diane? I just wanna say that you know, we are still board members. We have been hired um, as board members and voted in to complete our year at the end uh, or in May. So waiting and your continued advice to wait is against any, I mean, we have a duty as a board member to continue and to uh, do do due diligent, diligence as far as our um, prospects of work. 
So I just wanted to say that I would think it's our responsibility to continue and um, do this. All right. Um, may I have a roll call now? Um, Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Okay. Uh, All right. On to the next item. Number D. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the appointment of and payment to Lauterbeck and Almond in the amount of 9,500 to perform the audit of the Niles Main District Library as of the year ending June 30th, 2021, uh, which is coming up pretty soon. Uh, I have a motion from Patty. Is there a second? Is there any second? Uh, okay, Diane, I saw your hand go up first. Okay. All right. So, um, Lauterbeck and Company, as you all may recall, we had the same auditing company for many years, and um, we decided to go out and look at other auditing companies about three, three, three years ago, and we got some price submittals from each one of them. Lauterbeck came in substantially lower, so we decided to go with uh, a three-year agreement with them, uh, although um, we did say that you know, we we reapprove the amount every every year that they propose they would charge us for each year. So I think it's appropriate to stay with Lauterbeck and Company for one more year, um, and then you know after that it probably isn't a bad idea to go out again and see if their price is still the best one out there. Uh, again, we did save quite a bit of money when we went with Lauterbeck compared to the firm we'd been using before. I think we've been pretty pleased with the job they've been doing. And I think you probably do want to get your auditing firm to start pretty soon on doing uh, that audit as opposed to waiting any longer. So uh, that would be my recommendation to use Lauterbeck for one more year, then go out and once again, after that, decide if you want to use uh, another firm in the future. There's nothing wrong with changing in the future. So, does anyone else have any comments about that? Okay, then we have a roll call. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Just clarifying, it's for one year, correct? Yes. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Six yeses. Okay, all right. Um, I, I, you know, we've all, there's a lot on the agenda this evening. So I think it was very appropriate for this current board to vote on some of the things, things that we know a lot about because we spent time with it, like the roof, uh, like the sign, which we've been talking about for several months. Uh, the landscaping, again, was something that's just for one year. Lauterbeck, this is something, we've talked to this firm and used them several years, so we're familiar with them. There may be some other items on this agenda, which I feel that probably the next board knows or could learn as much about these things as, as we do. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna ask Susan and Greg if there's any of these things that, that can wait um, because it, it's, it's already been a long night and we have other things to discuss. Um, I, I am not an expert as to the air conditioning for the IT closet. I, I don't know if that one is pressing. Um, you can you can hold on the new administrative assistant. It is kind of killing me, but 
you can do that if you want. The thing that I think does need to be settled is the telephone contract because that's a particular situation and that does need to get worked out. The shelving unit certainly does not have to be discussed tonight. All right, your new administrative assistant, you you uh, have not uh, interviewed anyone yet or you don't have anyone lined no, up. No, I have a candidate. Yet? I have a, a particular candidate and she's you working She's working at another library, so I didn't want to put her name in the packet. I see. She has not I offered see. a resignation until she gets an offer from me, and I, I can't see. make an offer until I have board approval. I see. Okay. I, I wasn't sure where you were in that process. I know you I know Diane left months ago and, and Cindy unfortunately has had to uh, come in her stead during this time. Uh, oh, well, Diane did right. a lot more than that. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I, I know. I, I don't mean to suggest yeah. otherwise. Um, yeah. Well, it, let's let's skip to F now and, and talk about that because if, if you actually have interviewed and have a potential candidate ready to hire, um, I'd like to ask if there's a motion to hire a new administrative assistant at the annual salary of 48000 with benefits of three weeks of vacation time uh, to begin in three days of sick time. That's three days a year, three days for the whole year? No, it's an additional, it, it's to start out with a bank of three sick days. Um, oh, and there's I a particular reason that I, I need to ask for that, so. Um, all right, uh, do I have such a motion? Motion. Patty, Linda, okay. All right, so we have a motion on the floor. Does anyone have any questions about this? I mean, this is to replace uh, Diane's position, who we all knew and loved. Obviously, no one can replace Diane altogether, but um, Susan has been uh, without um, an assistant for some time now. I don't know if that's uh, how many months it's been, but it's been a few. So, January. It's been since January. Oh, yeah, okay. So do we have any questions or comments regarding number F, which we're on now? Carolyn? I, I have a few. Um, let's see. So Susan, um, the plan is to hire her with three weeks vacation and three additional Days, I think that's what I read. Um, I, I, I actually, well, I, I believe that we're hiring her for the sole purpose of employment, but yet hiring someone with special conditions to be off sort of defeats the purpose of being employed. And also, in consideration of the other library employees, vacation days and sick days should be earned the same way. I. Uh, I don't know that it's necessary to pad this position up front. Um, Diane Winberg was one in a million, that's for sure. But um, I, I, I don't agree with um, hiring someone and her salaries. I think somehow it's worded as 25% more or above 25%. I mean, this seems really lucrative. And we're just starting um, a person with a with a new position in our library. Um, but also, I noticed she plans to take on additional responsibilities, managing library volunteers, which will free up assistant directors' time. Um, again, I, this is a personnel matter, and I believe it should be part of the budget process, which is in May. Um, this. This, is, this isn't just a new position, but it includes reorganizing duties from the assistant director to the administrative assistant. And I think that requires discussion at the budget. So once again, I would like to amend the motion and request that we table the hiring of the administrative assistant until next month when we discuss our budget, because I'm sure there'll be a lot of other um, personnel issues that you'll probably um, have on the table as well. So that is, uh, my position is to table. Linda? Um, just restructuring of the duties of personnel is not our position. That's Susan's position. 
just to clarify that. And um, it sounds as though she will be starting less than what was given to what we had budgeted prior for that position. So um, the budgets will, will be less than what it was prior. So that's correct. I don't know it's going to be lower. So we don't have to budget anything in. We've already gained from Diane being absent all this time. So we're way ahead of ourselves and we're going to come in lower than what we had budgeted prior. So I don't foresee that even an issue. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Carolyn? I think for clarification, it's not a matter only of money. It's a matter of looking at personnel and what other, you know, possibilities there are for staff. Um, it, it's an entire conversation, um, but um, uh, it's, it's your decision. And I take it we won't table this. Silence means there's no second. If we could just, when I make a, a motion to um, table, if somebody could say, well, it didn't pass. So at least I know that it was heard and you just aren't going to pass it. Well, you know, I, I acknowledge that you made a motion, but that it uh, dies for lack of a second. So oh, I do okay. acknowledge that you made a motion. Okay. All right. This person, because of the experience. Linda, I'm sorry, you're breaking up. I feel like with a lot of experience. I am going to ask everyone to put themselves on and maybe. Um, while we wait for Linda, can I just say that, um, as, as Linda had said before, it's not a new position. This is a this is the position that has already been budgeted for. It's actually going to cost less than the budgeted amount. And this person has almost an equal amount of experience to Diane. It just did that it was at a different place. And that's why she would be coming in at a higher level. I didn't want to start with, you know, I just had such a candidate had such good experience to do this job that I could even give her additional responsibilities. So that's that is why I am pushing for it rather than just hiring somebody at a starting salary. Right. Thank you. And that's exactly what I was going to say. This person has so much experience to bring forth that it will definitely help us make that smooth, make that smooth transition. Thank you very much help us make that smooth, make it smooth for I'm sorry, I have to unmute myself. I've been saying Becky, but of course you couldn't hear me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> sorry. Um, I just want to second the fact that um, it is not the duty of the board to make job descriptions or assign tasks to employees that belongs to the director of the library. So that's not something that we can be doing. Um, and I want to thank Susan for working these months without an assistant. I'm sure it has not been easy, and I don't think we should wait any longer to, to hire one if we have such a qualified candidate. I'm pretty happy to find out that we have someone so talented. With that being said, I am not a fan of the three weeks of vacation either. Um, I think when you come into a new job, you kind of have to expect that you get two weeks like everyone else. Um, I, I just, I, I should clarify th that I didn't maybe word it well. I mean that um, she'd be um, accruing it. She wouldn't start out with a bank of three weeks of vacation. I just would like her limit, her total to be three weeks rather than the two weeks that normally you would be starting with. So but she not, would start with two weeks? She would start with, she would, start, she would be able to accrue to three weeks, but she still would have to be accruing. She wouldn't be starting with a bank of all of that time. Okay. And what you said that there was something about the three days, the three, the three extra, the, the three days of sick time. I uh, she would, I would like to give her to have that in the bank because I like, I like staff to be able to take care of their medical health. I think that's important. How many does staff um, normally get? Five, or I don't uh, know how many. You just are accruing one sick day a month, so okay. I just would like her to have a bank we of three, three sick days okay. to start. All right, thank you for clarifying that. I don't see any hands, so I'm calling for a roll. Cindy, please. Patty. 
Okay, I'm, I can talk. Hi, uh, yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, no. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Five yes, one no. Okay, all right, that passes. Um, now, you know, anyone is welcome to make a motion regarding the three other items that uh, are on our agenda under 10, that would be E, G, or H. Um, these don't seem to be time sensitive to me, but I could be wrong. The G is so time sensitive. Any, G is very time sensitive. All right. All right. What? Uh, all right. Do I have a motion to award a contract for fifty-six thousand five hundred fifty-six dollars and fifty-four cents to be paid for the special reserve fund to Telcom Innovations Group for acquisition and installation of a middle voiceover internet protocol replacement phone system? Do I have a motion? Patty, Diane. All right, uh, can we have a short ex explanation of this? And I mean short. Let, let me give you my short explanation. And if I'm missing something, Rich or Greg can fill it in. Basically, right. you guys signed off on a contract last month uh, with Midco. And then uh, in continuing with this, Rich determined that Midco had been, if I am understanding this correctly, Midco was bought up and came under another company who then promptly fired all of the telephone related staff so that we would not, you know, they maybe could have subcontracted our telephone installation, but then we wouldn't have had the upkeep that we, the support that we need going forward. So we have broken that contract with them where we had not received the, uh, co the contract back from them yet. So we have broken that contract and now we need the replacement contract um, which actually came in, Rich had negotiated it and it's actually a little bit lower. Okay, what did I miss that is important to know? Um, actually, um, uh, Midco had been bought by a firm some months earlier. Um, it did not become apparent that they were gonna get out of the telecom business until Rich started getting um, emails from people saying, I've been let go, his contacts over at Midco. And uh, that started uh, that started Rich trying to get into the get into that company and get some information. Uh, none was exactly forthcoming. Uh, so, uh, given the non-response uh, and what responses that we did get, we got very thin responses that said, "We're going to do this. We're going to do this." But at the same time, they didn't have the staff to perform which gave us uh, a lot of uncertainty around the level of support that we would get uh, going forward. So we talked to uh, Dennis Walsh and Dennis uh, drafted a uh, rescission notice because at this time uh, we had signed the contract and sent it to him but never got anything back. And uh, we haven't, since we sent the rescission notice, we haven't heard anything from them. And at the same time, he was able to get this uh, TIG uh, uh, group, uh, you know, get, get a contract from them. He checked some references, uh, a lot of references in the local government, which gave us uh, a lot of comfort. And when they reviewed the configuration, they found that um, an extra piece had been added that was superfluous to our installation, given our our base configuration in our network. And that's why there's a slight, um, there's a slight difference in the price, about $1,200. And I just want to remind the board um, that this is, uh, this is completely out of date, the system, and there, uh, it all has a single point where if that point fails, Right. the entire system will no longer work. And Rich has been helping it along for years now, purchasing things off of eBay, and, uh, and it now is time to replace the system. So we voted to spend $57,000 at the last meeting. That contract's been canceled. And now we can spend $56,000 for 
project. Is that correct? Roughly. I mean, I'm just yes. rounding it off. All right. Um, I, I can't remember because I don't have the material from the last meeting right at my fingertips. This purchase, did we go through a, um, you know, a government purchasing organization to yes. get this last time? Yes. And yes, we did. Mid Midco, uh, can we use Midco in the same way? Well, uh, we're not using Midco because they're out of the telecommunications business. It's. I mean, it, I don't mean Midco. I mean. Tig. Uh, let's see. What's the name? I'm sorry. There's so many. I have so many pieces of paper in front of me. Yeah, the the, the group that we're suggesting uh, that we contract with is an integrator, just like uh, just like Midco was, and provides uh -huh. the same service. Um, Only it's. I, only it's go ahead. Oh, no. um, and uh, uh, they've already, you know, given us some value by reviewing our uh, configuration and, and pulling out a piece, uh, which I think was actually a software license, um, which, uh, according to them, we do not need. And and we confirm. Uh, Rich okay. confirmed that back to uh, his contacts at uh, at uh, Mitel. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions now? All right. Carolyn? Is this the same phone system that um, Rich described to us last time? Yes. It is? Yes. Okay. The um, only difference is that the company putting it in. Okay. All right. Different. I wasn't sure because I noticed a lot of details in here, which I don't recall from the last time, but that doesn't mean they weren't here. Um, I did have a question. Um, is there a total number of phones we're getting? It's kind of um, hard to see. Yeah, I believe it's 87. Okay. So there's some, yeah, that, that makes sense, right? Because there's different IP phone numbers, which obviously are different types of phones, but there's about 80 phones. Okay. And then I only had one question on this sheet. One of them, it says there's a Mitel 5634 Wi-Fi handset. What is that? Uh, Rich, is in the, Rich is still in the room. Rich, can you hear me? Can you answer yes. uh, Carolyn's question? Yes, I'd be uh, delighted to. It is a uh, wireless um phone so that it's not tethered to a base station. Um, so someone calls, we can uh, walk through the building. Uh, it uses the technology Wi-Fi as opposed to other technologies that limit. So the, the range is throughout the entire building. Okay, that's logical. I, that, that makes sense. Okay, and then I was looking at the list, I guess this list, are these the the, these districts and school, there are school districts on here, there's cities and villages, they use the same phone system or did they participate in this government uh, um, so bid? Those are the references for the Telecom Innovations Group uh, company that uh, we uh, refer to as TIG, uh, that will be oh. the integrator installer. Uh, I contacted a number of the local um references that are local to us, such as uh, I believe Glenview was on there and some of the other school districts uh, and villages. Um, some of them are on the exact model that we will be going to. Others are on similar Mitel phone systems. Okay, because it when I noticed most of them are, are like high schools, colleges, they're huge in comparison to our library. And I was wondering, sure. I know- yeah. I'm, they're proud of the, the, the breadth of what they do. So, you know, as any company, I would imagine they would put, um, you know, the larger stuff uh, on there so that you could rest assured that they have the uh, personnel and the experience in order to put in that, uh, you know, type of system uh, through the range of what its configuration is. Certainly ours is not uh, gigantic. It's not uh, small. It's, you know, as, you, as we uh, spoke, uh, it's 87 phones. Um, as you implied, um, there's about, I believe, four lines changed with regards to the type of software, uh, as Greg in, uh, indicated. 
um, between the two different config configurations. And that's simply from the, uh, the fact that we reviewed it uh, with Mitel and they uh, acknowledge that uh, based on our base configuration as uh, Greg indicated, um, that change was necessary, which yielded a, a, a savings, so. Okay, well, what I was um, thinking about was um, the phones that we're getting from TIG are, are the same phones that these high schools and villages are using. Will we be using all the options on these phones if, if, if a school district has the same sort of phones? I, I, I was thinking that maybe the, these phones would be maybe more advanced than what we need because I know when I asked you last time, what were the new options? You said you, you didn't know of them, but I'm thinking just looking at the school districts using the phones that we're getting, I mean, that tells me that these must be some pretty elaborate phones. And I, I'm trying to understand if as a library, do we need whatever the options are on this phone or have we determined what the options are now on these new phones? Uh, well, I'm not sure from the references we can determine what size of uh, phone installations they have. Um, and, you know, the, the, the specs and the configurations on the phones that, uh, and the phone system that we specifically um, put in the configuration we reviewed, um, as we indicated in the original um, motion, uh, none of that has changed. Simply what has changed is the fact that um, the integrator basically was not um, responsive with regards to moving forward, so. Okay. Um... All right, and then uh, lastly, um, let's see what else do I have here. Okay, uh, once again, um, I'd like to motion that we table this phone um, purchase until next month when we are going to be reviewing our budget. And um, looking at the cost of it, um, we also will have a new board and maybe they would have some some input as well um, on this phone system. But that, that's what I'd like to do, motion to table it just until next month. Okay, your, your motion to table is noted, um, but uh, fails for lack of a second. Um, thank you. I, thank you. I, I note that this really is something we already voted on. I mean, the, the whole concept of buying this. We did vote on this last not month and now we're just we're just having to fix what we voted for because, well, of the series of events that's been explained to us. And unfortunately, as it turns out, we're actually saving a little money too. So that actually worked out okay. But we do need a roll call. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, no. Thank you. Yes. Diane? Yes. Five yes, one no. Okay. All right. Under number uh, 10, 10, we skipped E and H. Um, if, if anyone wants to make a motion regarding that, they can. Uh, I'm not going to call for it. Just given the time and the, what seems to me not as much urgency to address these matters, but if anyone wants to make a motion regarding those, or if our uh, director wants to state why they're urgent. No, they are not urgent. Not urgent. Anyone can do that. Okay, all right. I think we're gonna skip those. Okay. Carolyn, did you not wanna skip them? Uh, I have a question. Yes. About announce um, that last um, the telephone I was also told that the phone system should not come out of special reserves so if we could please just check that so that we're doing if it needs to come out of the um, special reserves or not I, I'd appreciate it just knowing maybe somebody could find out what the definition is yeah, I mean, the, the, our, our lawyer does review the budget, uh, re review the agenda every month and goes through the board packet. And the special reserve fund is for building and technology and equipment expenses. So I think that's very clearly an equipment expense, but we certainly can confirm with Dennis Walsh if you like. I'm building and I just building you know, and just, equipment. 
asking me. Thank you. Okay, now we're on 10I. So uh, I may have a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing the performance of specific employees of the Niles Main District Library and to review the executive session minutes for approval and consideration of release. Um, do I have a motion? I have it from Patty. And uh, Carolyn, were you sneezing or raising your hand? Um, I think sorry, sneezing. sorry. <laughs> okay, second. do I have a second? Second. Linda, Linda. All right, so we're gonna go into executive session. Um, we... Um, the time. Oh wait, I think we need to vote on that. We need to vote if we're gonna go into executive session. Okay. Uh, Cindy? Okay, Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Um, no. Actually, I was going to make a motion to table until next month. Becky? Okay, your, your motion is noted, uh, but we're actually in the middle of a roll call, but do you want to finish the roll call, Cindy? Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. All right, what I'm going to ask uh, everyone to do is leave the room. Um, and that includes you, Susan, if you would. No, wait, first we need you to stay on at the beginning, but then we may ask you to leave midway through it. Uh, Cindy, uh, I understand you are sort of our tech person. I'm going to ask you to stay for now, but we may ask you to turn your sound down. So, Rich, you can go now. Um, Greg, you can step out too, if you would, please. Um, would you like to suggest to people when they can come back in to, like, when you would estimate that it would be safe for them to log back I'm in? I'm going to guess, I, you know, I, I don't know exactly how long, 10, 15 minutes? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't know exactly. Um, I will. Um, okay. So, Cindy, um, let's see. Cindy, you've turned your sound down. So, you can, can you hear me, Cindy? Or I, have you turned it? I haven't turned it down yet. All right. All right. No, Cindy, what I want you to do, I know this is weird, but when I wave at you with both hands, that means to turn your sound back up so you can hear me, okay? Okay. If I need we, to get your attention, have, I will wave with both hands. We still have 17 attendees who all need to go ahead and log out. If I log them out, they will not be able to get back in. So they are gonna need to close out and then come back into the meeting in about 10 minutes. And if they come back in while you're still in session, you will have to remove them. And then they won't be able to come back in. They'd have to remove They would not be able to come back in in that case. Okay. I'm gonna take this right, opportunity Cindy, to be right back. When you've <laughs> turned your sound down. Cindy, let us know when you're doing that. Okay. I just wanna make sure I understand what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> okay. If someone comes back in. Okay, so there's still nine people here. Yep. When they're all gone, I'll turn my sound down. All right. And Cindy, uh, after you turn your sound down, I want you to just watch the screen in case I'm waving at you so you'll see me. All right? <sighs> okay. Yeah. Some of the people may have actually wandered away from their computers. So I think at this point, I'm just going to remove them. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm turning my sound down. Um, so I have to turn it down over here as well. Okay, so okay. well, I can still, Cindy? I can still hear you. Okay. 
If to, yeah. turn your volume down on the your actual the actual sound on the. Are you ready? Are you gone? Can you hear me? No. Okay. All right. Um, okay, fine. So um, what we do every year is we evaluate our director's uh, performance. Of course, the only person on the library staff that reports directly to us is Susan Lemke, our director. Everyone else reports to her. Uh, but it's, it's our job to evaluate our director every year. And I think as the person, as the board who has worked with Susan over the past year, we're in the best position to do that. Uh, we know what we've asked her to do. We know what she has done. We know what she's done in the past. We know what the goals are and so forth. So um, Susan Are we Lundy in did, executive session now? Yes, we are. We, we didn't vote oh, yeah, on it. We have to call it to order. We so didn't call we didn't vote it. on it, right? No. We didn't call to order. Yeah, so you do need to call that. Okay, all right. All right, let me Start call over. to order. Good catch, Diane. <laughs> 945. All right, we are calling it to order at 945 p.m. Um, so I think we we don't have to take attendance again, I don't think. I think we, we already have to take a roll call. Another roll call? Yeah. All right, I just want everyone to say their name. Um, D Say Diane, aye. you're taking notes, are you? Aye. No, uh, yes, I'm taking notes. All right, so Diane, can you just look at the screen and no. see that we're all here? <laughs> uh, oh, okay, you're all here. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Okay. Patty, Linda, Karen. For executive session, we're under uh, yeah, number... 10i, um, based on our recent executive session, I'm going to ask if anyone would like a motion to make a motion to award our director a bonus, uh, not a salary increase, but a bonus of $3,000 uh, based on her performance for the past year. Do I have such a motion? Patty? Mm -hmm. Yes. Second. Second, Second by Linda. All right, fine. Just to clarify, uh, there'll be no salary increase, but there is a bonus being uh, awarded to Director Lemke. Uh, her salary will remain the same for another year. Um, do I, um, I don't think I have any other comments. So may I have a roll call, Cindy? Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? 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 No. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, there was an added, Carolyn, yes. I wanted to make a comment before the vote. Um, I was actually taken back by this whole situation. Um, I would have liked to evaluate Susan Lemke like we usually do. I mean, for the board to have decided to evaluate her in April is kind of surprising. And I guess it was intentional, but it sets a I'm terrible- I'm not sure what you're saying, Carolyn. We, we always evaluate our, our director. What do you mean? In April, she gets evaluated in June or July oh, I, last year. Oh, I, my, my review date is May 20th. And a couple of years ago, I had suggested to the board that they start reviewing me in April because uh, because the, it, after that, it becomes all budget, budget, budget. And a lot of our interactions, Carolyn, are very, very negative during that period. So I'd ask the board to move it. Last year, it just was the pandemic that it was June. That is okay, not the normal time. We've, we've evaluated her always in June, and, and I feel that the purpose of That's this true. is because the board is switching, and that just, it just set a negative tone. And I feel like I, I, I was speechless hey. to even 
congratulate her on her year and thank her for what she's done. But I think tonight's meeting has set such a negative tone and, and I didn't expect us to do this with the director as well. But um, that's all I have to say. I, I'm not sure it was on our, our agenda and we've done this in the past. And I think it's very appropriate that you have the board that's worked with Ms. Lemke during the entire past year be the one that evaluates her performance to see if she's met her goals, knows what she's done, and can uh, make an informed decision as to whether or not she met her goals and served the board well and the district well during the past year. So there's nothing unusual about that. No, the so, only thing unusual. Right, we're done with that, that item. Work. Yeah. All right, Carolyn. And that's right. my point. We, we got to move on to the next want. agenda item. Right, the next agenda item that was added was discussion with and possible action on swearing in of trustees. So I have to read something. So I'd like everyone to put their mute button on. So hopefully uh, you can hear what I'm saying, everyone. Carolyn, can you put your mute on? I'm getting there. Susan, can you hear me? Yes. Can you put your mute on? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, all right. So uh, I just want to start off this item by, by reading something here, and this is it. So uh, this is in the form of a letter. Dear Director Susan Lemke and fellow Niles, Maine Library District Trustees, uh, as most of you probably know, I was elected Supervisor of Maine Township in the recent election, and I take office on May 17th. Uh, but as that day draws near and I learn more about uh, township supervisors' duties, I find myself becoming concerned that I will not have enough time to also serve as a library trustee. So with great reluctance and sadness, I've concluded that after nine years on the Niles Main Library Board, I must now resign my position as a library trustee. I hope that the library board will fill my spot with another person who loves the library as much as I do and who can devote to it the time it deserves. I've been honored to serve the residents of our district and hope that I've helped preserve and improve the great service our library has always provided. Working with the staff has been a great experience. I've always been impressed with how friendly, helpful, creative, and hardworking the staff members are and how they strive to serve their patrons who come to them with many questions. Susan, please convey my gratitude to your staff and to you I send my thanks for all you personally have done to keep the library running like a well-oiled machine, even during this pandemic. I know working with demanding board members has not always been easy for you. And my fellow trustees, I wanna thank you for the opportunity to work with you. My fellow citizens who are willing to volunteer many hours of their free time to make sure this library, this institution, continues to be an amenity that makes our district a great place to live to live and to go to a library. So um, I hereby resign my position effective immediately and I wish you all best wishes in the coming years. And therefore at this point in time, since I'm resigning and not able to act as president anymore, I must turn the meeting over to the vice chair, Linda Ryan. So Linda, take it away. Oh, I'm very sad to hear that. And thank you for all of your service, Karen. I am perplexed. <laughs> um, is what you had just stated, um, is there any motion to fill Diamond Trustee's position? I would like to uh, propose a motion. Um, first of all, I'm very sorry to hear the resignation of Karen Diamond. You have been valuable and devoted library trustee. And with that thought, I have a motion to replace Karen Diamond's position with a very qualified and experienced Becky Keen Adams. I second it. Uh, 
is Carolyn. Why are we choosing not to have an interview process? Can I get an answer? We don't have to have an interview process. We've already interviewed her for the position she took. Why should we have to interview her a second time? We elected a trustee amongst just the board members without opening it up to the public. Why all of a sudden are you changing that too? Tonight is really an amazing evening. We Thank have crisscrossed everything. I, I am, I'm trying to understand if we could just change our procedures just because you feel like doing that. So Becky, you would have to resign as Wilsey's vacancy and would you be willing to take Diamond's vacancy? Um, yes, I would be willing to take the vacancy. Um, thank you for nominating me. I appreciate your confidence in my abilities. Um, if I were to fill Karen's position, I would then resign from Sue Wilsey's position. Okay, so um, then we should take a vote. If we would like Becky Keene Adams to fill the vacancy and be sworn into Diamond's vacancy. So Cindy can take a vote. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. yes. Linda? Yes. Carolyn? I vote no. This is totally against procedure. And uh, so Karen and Becky don't vote? Or does Becky vote? Becky can vote it or not if she decides. Becky? Yes. That's four yes and one no. Okay, and then the next thing on the agenda. Welcome, Becky. Thank you. And um, yeah. I believe the next thing on the agenda is other. Does anyone have another? Uh, no, we have to swear um, Becky in, oh, in her new well, have position. To her in. Okay. Well, I would think so, isn't it, uh, right? Secretary. Okay, the secretary would do that. If, Diane, if you could do that. Yes, please repeat after me, Becky. What, do I need to resign the old position for? Oh, yeah, I thought you did that by saying. I said that. I would resign it. So I need to officially, I officially resign the position I filled in Sue Wills' vacancy. Okay, so the secretary has recorded that. Cindy. Yes. And then you would have to officially accept the other. I officially accept the position uh, to, uh, to fill Karen Diamond's vacancy. Okay. And then um, if you could read the oath. Okay, please repeat. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Office of Library Trustee. Of the Office of Library Trustee. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Um, congratulations, Becky. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, okay, next. 
agenda item is other. Anyone have another? Okay, then I, I uh, move. Carolyn. Um, I um, met with the veterans, the Vietnam veterans. Um, I think the post three three one. That could be incorrect. Um, regarding the veteran benches outside, mm -hmm. um, and they're trying to get some information about who actually, um, I think, made those benches originally to see if we could find someone who could help um, repair them or come up with some suggestions because they're really in bad shape. At least the benches, not under the atrium, they're in pretty bad shape. So, um, I mean, nothing's come of it, but I wanted to mention it because um, it's something that... Um, we probably should look into and hopefully they'll come up with some solutions. I know there have been some suggestions for plastic benches, but I think that's something they need to look into as well, as far as weather and, and that sort of thing. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, I remember the situation and I have some experience with this as far as being a scout leader at the high school level, not with the boys, with the girls and knowing how these projects work. This was a gold, or not a, excuse me, gold is girls. This was an Eagle Award. So therefore a boy or a group of boys take this on as their project. Once the project is done, unless that particular boy wants to hang on to it, you have to see if another scout will carry it on if you're having scouts do it or somebody else has to handle it. I don't think our interest is in having scouts. I think it's way past that type of work. So right now we're just in the stages of trying to identify what needs to be done and, and then we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. And next, right, Becky? Yeah, I think that there was some emails between um, Susan and Tisha, if I'm not um, wrong, about the same problem. So I think, Susan, maybe you have some more updated information, possibly. If it, I don't know if anything happened after that, but... It has been looked into already, I think, right? Uh, well, we, we had approached Eagle Scouts, two different Eagle Scout leaders uh, or Scout leaders about it. And they initially thought that they would be able to find someone, but they were not able to. So um, Dave has actually done a lot of research into what the possibilities are. I would suggest that we put this on the agenda for next month. Sounds uh, good. Yeah. All right, um, I, Cindy, oh, yes, Becky? I have another. Um, I wanted to bring some attention to this article that was in the paper um, on March 31st from, that Carolyn wrote. Uh, I know that I am new to the board and I am not, haven't been involved in a lot of the things that were mentioned in this article, but there are some um, things in here that I find hard to believe if not untrue. Um, for example, Board presentations, proposals, et cetera, are not included on the website for residents review before meetings. Uh, that's not true. Oh, yes, um, that's exactly true. There are no presentations. Okay, Carolyn, Becky's talking right now, please. Go ahead. Okay, I'm reading straight from the article. I can't speak to proposals. You're right, I haven't actually seen that. However, um, it says, presentations, proposals, et cetera. So that's not an entirely statement. Uh, sorry, entirely true statement. Then there's another one that says, um, the board president read a blah, blah, blah. Incumbents refuse to include missing facts or correct errors in minutes. Board videos are edited, hiding information from residents. That's true. I don't think that's true. Um, also, current trustees align to stop term limits. If that's true, that's not, that was before I came on board. I never witnessed any of that. Uh, current trustees refuse to review the 2019 capital projects for necess necessity and evaluate costs before approval. Again, not true with this rough, like we talked about tonight, it's been going on for two years. Um, current trustees approved non-emergency projects, $900,000 unnecessary roof replacement. It says unnecessary, which was, um, contradictory to what the experts have told us and what we agreed as a board. Um, and no, it is not an emergency right now, but if we waited until it was, then we would be in trouble for having 
consequences of a leaky roof. Um, so I just want to point out that in my opinion, those for things are not true. And I would like to also quote a couple of things. And I know it's late and I'm sorry for taking more time, but I've been trying to get this addressed for a while. So I'm the things that I mentioned earlier um, about that would be helpful for new trustees to put in the packet, the public library trustee ethics statement. Um, trustees shall respect the opinions of their colleagues and not be critical or disrespectful when they disagree or oppose a viewpoint different than their own. Uh, trustees must distinguish clearly in their actions and statements between their personal philosophies and attitudes and those of the library, acknowledging and supporting the formal position of the board even if they disagree. Trustees must respect the confidential nature of the library business and not disclose information to anyone. And then, um, one more, I think, from the 12 golden rules for board members. A trustee does not voice her or his opinion, opposition, or criticism, either publicly or privately, after a policy or rule is adopted by a majority vote of the board. So I think that you're really in violation of the ethics of this board, and I would hope that you might not do that in the future. Thank you for your input, but those are personal opinions, and when I make any statements, they're factual. And I'd be glad to point out all the facts to help you, but I appreciate your input. And pardon me, but that also is a personal opinion. The only problem is, is when you're on the board, we represent as a board. So we represent the truth. Correct. That's which a matter of opinion. So again, no, we just have to all, all be in compliance with that and make sure that we view things. And when we make a board decision, we stand by that board decision. So thank you, Becky. Um, anyone else have any other comment? If not, I'd like to adjourn. All right. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Patty? Mm -hmm. Second? Diane. Okay, Cindy, if you could take a roll, please. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Becky? Yes. Diane? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Good luck, Karen. Have a great, great Bye. Hello. Thanks, Karen. Bye. Bye. Take care. We'll miss you. 1031. Yes.